our first meeting in probably six weeks. It's been some time. So it's good to yeah. see everybody. Welcome back. So we have to skip or skip overview temporarily yep. uh, until a fourth member gets here. So what we'll do is we will take uh, some other items <coughs> on the agenda. Let's look at planning updates and other business. Request for town planner authorization and a sign change at 107 Main Street, Sam's Bistro. So, Sam's Bistro approached us a couple weeks ago indicating that they are doing a, um, a new concept. Uh, it's, you can see it here. Uh, they're going from Sam's Bistro to Fusilli's Cucina, um, an Italian style restaurant, same owner, uh, just changing the concept. Um, this is in the business A zoning district, so typically CPDC does not have jurisdiction over sign reviews, but during site plan review, CPDC did actually approve and review the signage. So we have a, you know, it shown up here on the screen as CPDC approved. So I wanted to run it by the CPDC to see if this could qualify for town planner authorization for a sign change. This is what we've gotten from them and it's going to be um, sort of channel lit through these graphics here. So we've had some challenges with their sign, haven't we, in the past? Yeah, um, they had some, I believe some LED, like a string of LED lights that were added at one point. And, um, you know, I did, did mention it to him, you know, the concern about sort of making the changes without seeing CPDC mm -hmm. prior to that. So when he came in, I told him that I wanted to at least run it by the CPDC. Um, I couldn't guarantee, you know, how you guys would feel about it. So if you want to see a more formal submission from him, that would certainly be an option. This is, this is what he provided me at this point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The background for him is, is uh, it's like a little fake, and then it'll be more like the same as these still letters, but mm -hmm. they're all running the front, right? Correct. Which is a lot of Yes. <laughs> He's not proposing any other any other changes to the site, um, just strictly a reconcept. Is there signage on the front of the building? There isn't, right? No, only uh, one sign is allowed yeah, for right. single tenanted okay. buildings. Okay. So obviously there would be a, on each side of the yeah. sign. Yeah, sure. Ooh. Grammatically it's incorrect, but that's okay. What's incorrect? What am I saying? Because in Italian it'd be split. It'd be the oh, I see, kitchen. yes. Um, I, I mean, to me, it looks a little more like the red. Uh, uh, zoom in here. It looks so we just more red. Just jump to another part of the agenda. Hmm. We just we didn't start. Red and green. First item of the agenda. Okay. We jump to the end. Yeah, we can um, certainly have them get a sample to to verify what's going up there. I mean, I see it as a red, but it wouldn't hurt to get a sample. I know, I'm seeing it as a red, too. Yeah, but I've got no objections. Any objections here? Do we have to vote on this or anything? You can vote to authorize town planner approval, and what I would do is I would um, put something in the file indicating the vote, and this is what was reviewed and okay. by CPDC. Perfect. So. Our motion man. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's a little Just unfair. Just in time, eh? <laughs> yeah, to authorize the town planner administrative right. approval. Oh. Um. Move that the CPDC uh, authorize uh, town planner approval for the uh, 
Signed at change at 107 Main Street, former Sam's Bistro. Second. All those in favor? Presumably it's formal. <laughs> Good. All right. So let's move on to, now that we've got a quorum for public hearing, let's move on to the public hearing for home occupation special permit uh, 26 Green Street. Nick, you want to read that? Notice is hereby given under section 4.4 4 and 4.4.6 4 of the Revenue Zoning Dialogue. Community Planning and Development Commission, CPDC, will hold a public hearing on Monday, May 18th, 2015, at 7 30 p.m. in the Collectman Community Room at Reading Town Hall, 16 Lowell Street, to hear the request for a special permit for a home occupation from Lorraine Rural for the property located at 26 Green Street, Sessive Map 16, Lot 315. The applicant is requesting a special permit in accordance with the table of uses 5.3.1 for, for home occupation in the Business B Zoning District. A copy of the application and associated plans are available to the community and the community services, to the public and the community services department in Town Hall Monday through Thursday, 7.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. and Tuesdays from 7.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. Thank you. All right, so just how we normally manage these, uh, we'll get a kind of a briefing from, from staff on the project, give you an opportunity to provide an overview. Uh, we'll discuss, have any questions, comments, have those addressed, and then if anyone from the public is here to weigh in, we'll give them an opportunity, and then we'll, we'll vote. All right. So Jesse, you want to give a brief overview? Sure. So we do have Lorraine Muller here. She's the applicant for uh, the special permit for home occupation. Uh, she is seeking a special permit to operate a skincare salon out of her home on 26 Green Street. Uh, if you recall, the CPDC made some changes as part of the last zoning update. Uh, prior to that, she would not have been allowed to have a home occupation in the Business B District. This didn't really make sense since we certainly allow it in other um, areas of town. So since that change, she now is allowed to apply for the special permit for home occupation. She did submit a request along with um, a site plan showing the proposed parking layout. She does have a rather large um, site to accommodate you know a number of customers but she has indicated she generally has one client at a time so i'll let her go into the details of the proposal sure yeah please okay. welcome um yeah it sounds it's not like a big like a hair salon it's just a tiny little treatment room i get facials um and i have a shoulder injury so i need to cut my nose in half and if i do that i'll i'll just be working to pay the rent in the Reading center where i have 200 square feet of space um so um, I don't want signage, I have off-street parking, um, I'm not going to be taking any new clients or working on Saturdays anymore, so when I say small business, it's pretty, pretty small, but I want to keep my hand in it. I have two kids in college this, um, um, this September, and I need to, I need to help out as I can. Um, super quiet, um, not a lot of foot traffic, especially with my, my kids not home. I live, it is, a, you know, it's always been a commercially zoned area, um, so it was always something I thought I would, I would do years down the road. I've owned the house for 23 years, but just moved back to it three years ago when we did all the work to it. Um, I had Glenn out to the house, Glenn Redmond, he was great, and he didn't see any problem with the, um, we're just going to redo the basement into a little waiting room and a little treatment room and a powder room. Um, and he was awesome. He actually gave us some new ideas. Um, but he said that there shouldn't be a problem with the with his end. Um, um, I think that's <laughs> so, um, yeah. I mean, it's a cut through to the train station, so my street is. You know, there are always people walking up and down. It's just right out of the center of town. It's that little section of Green Street near the train <coughs> station. Um, but I do have a nice big parking lot, and I will designate a, a spot 
for my clients and um, you know like I'll have a person come in an hour and a half an hour and 45 minutes later I'll have another person come in and I might not see someone until 7 o'clock that night and then that's the day so it's it's super quiet, no deliveries, no, um, like that list that you guys had for me to fill out, most of it was, well you have that, it was, most of it didn't um, pertain to me. So. There it is. Couldn't figure out what it was. Oh, that's so funny, that picture is like before it was even finished. Yeah, there's no steps. Yeah, looks did like. I give you that picture? This no, time? this is just a straight view. Oh, I'm like, what do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> that house isn't even done yet. Yeah, so. Um, I have two different two means of egress, one in the back, one in the front, so two stairways. I thought um, I was happy about that. It was, it was good. So one thing, just to note, this property does have a special permit for the garage from the Zoning Board of Appeals to address, um, I believe, the setback. Yeah, but the, but that plane came out. Okay. Yeah, so as part of that special permit, there was a condition to maintain the second floor of the garage storage, so this building um, inspector just wanted to verify that that was being complied with. Sure. So. And he did. Yeah. Good. I know this is a, <coughs> this section of road is pretty narrow, and... It's a one way now. Yeah, this. yeah, no, that, that's great, and yeah. I know you're competing with the mechanics down the street as well, but the oh. fact that you have a good amount of off-street parking right there yeah. is very helpful. I can fit seven in a pinch, but six is comfortable. I and think you even be, need that, right? No, I need one, but, um, and I would have that be, be, you know, so it would be empty all day for that person. So I just, I don't want to, um, I don't want to infringe on my neighbors, the next door neighbors, they're awesome. Um, <laughs> I'm not that noisy person, I still want it to be a home, like I said, no sign. Sure. Um, don't want anyone to even know it's there, really, other than my clients that I've seen every month. For, you know, and I, I recently became an oncology esthetician, so um, I work on people with cancer, um, which are really there's not that many people coming out to get a facial and they're sick. But um, that's like the next step would be just to go and volunteer my time at the hospital. Uh, but I need a few more years doing this until my kids are out of school. Sure. Good. Thank you for that. Any questions from the board? Um, no, this is a great idea. Um, no, I mean, just a matter of curiosity, we've had the uh, salon place over at, at One General Way. Um, is that going in? Sola? Sola Salon? Sola, <coughs> yeah. Yeah, that has, that's, uh, that's been issued an occupancy permit, um, and I believe that Five or six tenants have signed leases. Oh, okay. Individual stylists. I'm not sure if you're. I am very that. familiar. It's a, it's expensive. It's like five hundred and something dollars a week for a tiny little space. Wow. And they but you you rent the equipment, you rent the space, you rent like everything's combined. I, I think I think that's very expensive. So that wouldn't be that wouldn't be good okay. for me. I could, um, no, I'm, I'm just. But yeah, the, um, it's a great concept for someone who doesn't want to yeah. like buy their own equipment or rent their own. You know, do any of it. Um, or who doesn't have the opportunity that you have. Right, I am very lucky. I yeah. was was very lucky purchasing this house and with that in mind for down the road. What's the latest hour you think you'll take an appointment? Um, seven o'clock is like pretty much I'll do a facial if I work like two nights a week at seven o'clock. So eight thirty. Um, but you know, that's I mean that's not really late, especially in, in our neighborhood. Are there any sort of special waste requirements or like any medical waste or? Um, just regular trash like mm -hmm. cotton. I probably put one bag a week, every week and a half in my dumpster in the center. Mm -hmm. So um, everything's like hot towels, so I launder everything. Okay. I, have a, I have a question. Yeah. outcome of the board tonight. What is your time time frame? Do you still have to do your um, bill well, right? I'm, <coughs> I'm totally rehabbing my shoulder for months and months now, so I'm going to take off the entire month of July and August, possibly September, to do the 
face went over because of course it's my husband okay. who has to do that. Um, I'm not in a rush, um, but I, uh, I am in that tiny little um, space above the Middlesex Maine Animal Hospital mm -hmm. with um, Danny Webb is next to me, and he's outgrowing his space, which is much bigger than my 200 square feet, but he wants to like expand into my space. So I, I would, if this goes through, I would like to be out of there on July 1st, let him expand, and then give us plenty of time to just do it and yeah. open some time with all. But I wouldn't be doing any kind of brand opening or any kind of advertising, obviously. I kind of want it to be even though I'm in front of all of you talent. Yeah. But you know what I mean, because I don't want new clients, because I, I wouldn't be able to keep up or keep that low hours a week. Yeah. 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 yeah, the only thing that sounds great, the only thing related to that would just be to have your sign come down when you leave the premises. We do have a requirement for that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's, that's my favorite part. I love that sign. You got a lot of comments. We, we I know, a lot you guys helped me put yeah. that. <coughs> the first blade sign, or maybe the second, now the one was tiny um, in yeah. town. It's a great sign, but it also brought me on some business that I it kind of overwhelmed me, which I said, that's when I built center. So, um, which one was it again? Glow? Uh, yeah, it's a pink yeah, yeah, sign. Yeah, yeah, sure. It's really that sign. pretty. And now, every, I love that you know, all the way down the sidewalk, a lot of blade signs. And that was you, it was you guys. So. Good. <coughs> Any last questions? Any concerns? No, just uh, you are allowed signage, so if you want signage later on, just work with Jesse and comply with the rules and be also. Good. Any motion? Um, oh, yeah, I'm sorry, you're right. Public hearing. Anybody from the public have any questions, comments, concerns? <coughs> I love that you brought your neighbors. That's, that's <laughs> great. My support. Yeah. <laughs> you can see our roof in that bottle. <laughs> there. On the left. The yeah. <laughs> they have the yeah, that's our house. They have the best yard in the street. That's oh, great. We're very supportive. Yeah. <laughs> see, that makes things a lot easier. So that's mm -hmm. good. Move that we close the public hearing for the uh, home, op home occupation special permit, uh, 26 Green Street. Second. All those in favor? Move that the CPC approve the special permit for the home occupation uh, to 26 Green Street uh, as presented. Give a second. Second. All those in favor? No question. Just one question oh, yeah, on, yeah, the, sure. on the decision format. Why isn't the address up in the title area? I thought that the yeah, address was always up in there. <coughs> uh, No, do we need to go through this any in any more detail? Uh, Apologize, I feel like you're I'm not, just you, uh, the four spaces are fine. Um, four spaces, <laughs> the way she has them laid out. I just space <coughs> number three looked a little awkward, but. <coughs> Any concerns with four spaces? It's, looks like it works. Yeah. Okay. Right. So we have a motion. <coughs> yeah, we already seconded. Oh, we did. That's right. All those in favor? Abstaining. Abstaining. 
We're good. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. So while I finalize this, it gets filed with the clerk, and then it goes into the file, and then you would be able to file with Glenn. All right, thank you. Yeah, Marcel, you want to help? All right. Moving along. Is it 745? <clears throat> oh, yeah. All right, so next on the agenda is the public hearing for site plan review 306 Main Street Pizza World. <clears throat> Pizza World friends over here. Okay, great. Thank you. Wanna read the public? Yeah. Notice is hereby given under section 4.6 of the Reading Zoning Bylaw, Community Planning and Development Commission, CPDC. We'll hold a public hearing on Monday, May 18th, 2015 at 745 in the Selectman's Meeting Room at Reading Town Hall, 16 Lowell Street, to hear the site plan review application from TLAS LLC for the property located at 306 Main Street. Assessor's map 11, lot 226. The applicant is proposing to construct a new building with a footprint of 2,200 square feet that will be used as a restaurant. The project will also include construction of parking areas, associated lighting, and drainage improvements. A copy of the application and associated plans are available to the public in the Community Services Department in Town Hall Monday through Thursday from 7.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. and Tuesdays from 7.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. All right, thank you. So we'll, you know, we'll start with a brief overview from staff, give you an opportunity to present your, uh, your application, and we'll discuss it and answer, ask any questions and open up the public comment, close the hearing, look at the decision and vote. So we'll hand it off to Jess. Sure, uh, on the board here we have the uh, proposed site plan this for 2,200 square foot uh, footprint building, 32 seat restaurant, 18 parking spaces. Uh, he's got uh, modifications since the last application you had seen. Um, if you recall, he did present the application but withdrew that application to uh, redesign some details of his site. So a few changes, and I can let Jack go into those details, but a few things that, you know, I just wanted to call the detail is, um, you know, he's eliminated <coughs> some of the uh, vertical granite curb throughout the site. Uh, I'll let Jack go into the details, but my understanding is to, uh, deals with the drainage system that he's proposing. Um, he's got a patio out here, um, and he's also installing some new guardrail. He's also proposing a fence in the rear of the site only. Uh, I believe that's shown on some of these, one of these drawings, but it's essentially at the 25 foot mm -hmm. upper. Um, so we did submit some comments included in your packet. The applicant did uh, respond to those comments um, in writing. I just put that on one document. We do have a memo from the town engineer who's also here as well. Uh, we received a email from our MLP and the fire chief uh, indicating you know, their uh, approval or comments regarding the site. Uh, one thing that um, we may want to spend some time discussing is the uh, deliveries. Um, I did meet with the applicant last week to sort of talk about some of these issues, but this current operation has an 18 wheeler that comes and discusses deliveries and hit found a solution for this, but my initial thought is there may be a challenge getting that 18-wheeler around the site um, with that, that first curve here. So we'll want to touch on that. A um, few other things related to the snow storage, limited snow storage on site. Uh, they may be able to, to, to speak to that. Uh, but those are just some of the few things that, that we see that we may want to spend some time discussing. I'll let Jack go into a little bit more detail about the site. Been a little while. Uh, for the record, my name is Jack Sullivan. I'm owner of the Sullivan Engineering Group, and I'm here with Brandon Simpson, who's the owner of Pizza World. Um, to add on to what Jesse stated, a um, <coughs> couple things have happened since we last met with you. If you remember when we last came before you, um, Brandon actually withdrew because he started getting cost estimates. They were with, with the 
budget he has for this project, they were coming in well above what he anticipated the numbers to be. Uh, we actually spoke a little bit to this board about even trying to reduce the building size or you know, the vertical granite curving is a big expense, and we looked at maybe the alternative type of curving or firm to be put in place. And in discussions with the board and also the town engineer, um, basically we said is if there was a way to develop the stormwater so that the curbing isn't a critical component of that stormwater system, um, then it, and, and there was a way that water would sheet off the parking lot into some sort of treatment like a crushed down swale or something to that effect, that, uh, that there would be the ability to at least entertain a waiver um, on, on for this site so what I did is I, I went back and I, I basically redid my entire drainage study um, previously I had a rain garden out in the front with with the proposed patio is now um, I eliminated that and, and we created a, a, a patio area that will be fenced in with with seating for the restaurant um, I did keep the granite curving at the site entrances and, and along this section of um, the parking lot and that's because w w with the flow coming off in the proximity to this property I wanted to make sure water got back um, into this area. Do, do you have the drainage slide? I do. Yeah. Let me just zoom in for you. So in areas that I needed to maintain curbing to keep channel flow um, but basically, I, I have a crushed stone uh, swale that leads back to a rain garden. On this side of the site, I have a series of rain gardens. I have a small rain garden here, a small rain garden here. There's overflows built into those, so in certain storm events, there's, there's a hooded overflow pipe, and then there's underground piping, and ultimately, everything comes back to this rain garden in this area, and then there's a uh, emergency overflow for larger storm events to the rear. Um, prior to coming to CPDC, we went to conservation a couple weeks ago. They were basically set to close the hearing. Uh, we, we asked them not to, uh, just because we wanted to come to this board first to see what other comments or possible revisions would come up. And uh, depending on how we make out with you guys tonight, then we'll be looking to close with conservation. I did review George's comments, and there are a few issues that I need to work out with him. Um, one is on the drainage on the rain gardens. I only have about six inches of freeboard, so the large storm events is six inches before water would overtop the banking. Um, he'd like to see a greater separation for more protection. So I may have to put some sort of um, underground drainage online just to provide some additional storage. My idea is and I can work this out with George as if it's, uh, I saw the draft decision where as long as I meet his concerns, you'd be okay with it. But I, I was thinking of doing something with some sort of underground infiltration. Um, and then the roof runoff would go into that area and then overflow out to the <coughs> rain garden, but give, give additional storage capacity within the rain garden areas. Um, I don't think I mentioned this, but with Mass DOT, um, this is a state highway. Uh, we received approval for the two curb cuts, and we also received our utility permits for the, for the water and sewer connections to the site. Um, copies have been provided for Jesse on that, and, and George has copies as well. Um, as Jesse stated, the, the fence along the rear line was more a concern of conservation, but it's also that there is uh, residents behind and, and, and um, not that he's come to any meetings, but he, there was some concern, I think, in writing, or I at least received a phone call, concern with headlights and just providing some sort of um, buffer. So we're, we're going to have landscaping as well as a six-foot high fence in, in the rear yard. Um, that's the only fence, right? That's the only fence. One thing that should be noted that, that will get changed on this plan, and, and Brandon did submit a new lighting plan to CPDC, is we show three pole mounted lights in the parking lot. Um, when Brandon submitted the photometric plan utilizing this arrangement, there was a slight spillover onto one of the abutting properties. Very minimal, but it exceeded the requirements uh, for, from this board. 
So he redid the photometric plane. He's basically eliminating any pole mounted lights and just using um, wall packs, I believe, on, on, on the restaurant itself. He did provide an updated photometric plan. Um, it appears he has the coverage, there's no spill spillover to any of the abutting properties. Um, I could let Jesse or George speak more to that. I, I haven't seen the revised photometric plan, but I, I just wanted to let you know those the, the three pole mounted lights are, are not not there now. In the new plan, they'll, they'll be eliminated. Um, a lot of the other changes um, were minor in nature. Um, some bollards were added to, to protect the dumpster area. Um, there was some concern. This is a front loaded dumpster. Uh, Brendan's trash removal company um, does have the ability to come in, pick a, it's a front loading machine to, uh, to empty the dumpster out. Um, he will need, need a waiver from the loading space requirement. Um, and in speaking with him before the meeting, um, if, if his current supplier, who, use, who does use an 18-wheeler to make deliveries, that's not going to work for this site. There'd, there'd be no way to make the movement around the building. Um, the town doesn't want to see someone backing out on the main street. So if they're not able to get a smaller type box truck to make deliveries, he's going to have to change vendors. Um, get someone else, but he, he will not be using an 18-wheeler to make deliveries. He would be, be more of a box truck unit for deliveries. Um, <clears throat> one thing that should be noted is this is the 35-foot buffer line here, and there's small sections that go inside of the 35-foot no structure zone. That uh, Conservation Commission's okay with it, but they want me to put a variance request stating why we need to do that and, and what benefit this is and the, the the selling point is it's a 21 east site it's been being cleaned up it was an old gas station uh, we're creating extra green spaces stormwater uh, management now it's it's a redevelopment project um, there was an area if, there, if you remember the site where the gas station was there there was an older building that was already within the 35 foot it was the area you went up to pay. It was just a little small building. Um, so th th they're going to be okay with that. I just have to put something in writing on that. But just, just to let you know, we will need a variance from them for, for the, the, the two or three areas that we encroach on the 35 foot no structure zone. Um, the basic architecture of the building, Brandon, is about the same, correct? Same. You know, he pretty enough with some window boxes along Main Street. We have the bike rack, and we, we tried to follow <coughs> some of the master plan recommendations from 2005. Um, when you say the same, <coughs> you're referring to the previous time you came Correct. Okay. Yes, it's the same footprint, same layout. I know Nick had some comments and going way back, and you know, to save money, you know, some things could be changed a little bit here or there to save some space on the inside, but Brandon was comfortable with the design that he did have, and um, by making some of the changes I made, it looks like this will come in on budget form now. Uh, the snow storage, we, we really, we don't really have any, we have a small, small st snow storage area behind the dumpster. It's very small. So there's gonna have to be some sort of agreement um, that Brennan submits with some sort of snow hauler on removing snow from this site. Mm -hmm. he, he can get something like that. And, have something in writing, some sort of contract was, uh, I don't know if you've done that in the past, but he'll have to have some sort of private arrangement to load snow off the site. It, it can't be disposed of in the rain gardens, or and there's, there's really not much space to put it on this site. Okay. Probably missed a few things, but I'll open it up to any yeah, questions. Yeah. Well, a um, matter of curiosity, the uh, because of the prior use as a gas station, there was some question about the actual um, underground condition. I mean, uh, basically under the building. Has that been resolved? They're uh, trying to work on closing it out, but that's that's between Getty and um, the state, I guess. Yeah, okay. but, um, but you also had a geotechnical engineer up to the site, right, Brent? Yeah. I, I, 
I think Mr. Tom's referring to like support for. Are you talking the soil itself? conditions for support? Or are you talking the, the conditions of the soil as far as being contaminated? Um, well, the support, I have no doubt that, that you can manage the possibility of uh, un uncovering some contamination when you're in the construction. Well, we're doing uh, um, to three foot um, crawl space. The water table goes up to about five feet. Um, so we're actually putting helical piling pylons. Okay. Uh, so we're not going to dig down into the uh, into the well into the so water table. You're carefully avoiding the, the problem. Yes. Right. Yeah, that's and, do. and my guess is I, I would think it out where it's a 21E site. The LSP will be on site during the excavation. Yeah. Um, it'll probably be a requirement from the conservation commission anyway. So. They'll, they'll be, you know, if, if, you know, he'll be there with the sniffer checking if anything okay. comes up. Excellent. But we think the the hot spot on this site was more somewhere the right off, front in the entrance, right towards this entrance area. That, That's that, pretty that, much the reason. That, 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 that was the last spot that was kind of a, I guess, over the threshold you could say. Right. But it's up it's up to the old Getty to their LSP is the one who's going to be right. responsible for cleaning this, closing the site out. Not, not Brandon's LSP. Okay, it appears that the, there will be um, access to the patio area from the, the front center of the building? From the sides? Just the sides. Just the sides, okay. Because the, there, what looks like doors right here in the front, that's why I asked. Well, I had, um, we had talked about before, I, I wanted to make a break. Um, I, I opted not to go for a front door. Uh, I went for two side doors. Okay. So instead of having a bank of windows, um, I know they like a break of, you know, so I put that in. Um, so then the, okay, the I know that doesn't <coughs> make it properly, but the fence will be pretty much in the front and up the sides. Okay. And then the thing I added was the banner, I guess, in between the first and second floor on both sides. Mm -hmm. Break that a little bit. We have um, samples of the awning, roof, and siding material. Pass them around. Is there a plan to put seating out in that brick patio area? Yeah. What protection is offered to the patrons from a passerby driving right through? There'll be fencing. Oh, there is fencing? So, so yeah, there'll be aluminum fencing uh, <coughs> covering the front and the side. There's a note. See the four foot? It's, it's probably hard to read because there's a lot going on there, but there'll, there'll be a four foot high aluminum fencing closing that entire patio area. What is this distance? There'll be some plantings in the front and this vertical granite curving on the street. So no, no one would directly come into that area and on the site entrance. Directly, so not it's angle. coming 40 miles an hour sideways, white to the road. Right. Mm -hmm. well. There's a sidewalk <coughs> too. Yeah, it doesn't stop. And it's a one-way parking lot? One way, yep. And you have a sign Correct. indicating yeah. all that? Yeah, that was one of the requirements. Oh. So I'll add that. As part of Mass DOT I, on this, I, ha I do have, I can't read it there, but I have a proposed en entrance sign mm -hmm. post here. Um, I just can't see what that says over here. Sorry, Jack. So you have proposed enter here? And yeah. And proposed proposed enter. And stop. Then this is a double mm -hmm. sign, so on one side it'll say do not enter, and on, on when people are coming in, it'll say no left turn. Not that people may follow that, but that's what Mass DOT wanted to say. If you're more curious or not, since we're talking about uh, uh, mascot, um, none of the crazy requirements on speed and radius and all that. So that's our one comment. If, if the first application I made, it came back through. Might be a first. Interesting. It probably depends on the reviewer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
good engineer. He doesn't want to. <laughs> no, 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 because my other ones have come back, right, on some of the other yeah. projects yeah. in front of you guys. Yeah. What are you thinking for plantings in those two front areas? Uh, I'd have to see the legend. I haven't looked at this in a little while. <coughs> Got some ma a maple, some perennials, it looks like. Yeah. Looks like two red maples and perennials. Okay. So the trees will help a yeah. little bit. You might, I don't know, can you burn those up just a little bit? Would that help with uh, redirecting traffic, if you will? Right, like at the back of the sidewalk? No, I'm thinking about the two front portions of plantings as Karen's concern about oh, the yeah. cars the, the trees cars hitting it right if you give it a slight burn then that'll sure. potentially yeah. slow down the car a little bit I mean the, cur the curb should do it first the sidewalk and the trees I've seen that before yeah that'd be fine yeah you're not six feet just a little bit it's just enough to get the car's bumper to start hitting it I wonder if it originally wanted a sort of like wall and then put some boxwoods a little bit to kind of make a buffer or something like that. But, and the other thing we don't have on there is the street trees um, that have to be determined at, towards the end of the job. I mean, uh, it's only a five foot wide sidewalk, right? Yeah. Not not tree tree trees. Don't I need uh, on my property a couple trees? Well, we have the not two. Room. two we yeah. have the two maples. There's not enough on room right property. here or here? Yeah, on the property. I That's not on the street, though. No. No, no, not on, on, in the right of way, and just along the right of way. Mm. So you were thinking here and here, right, Brandon? Yeah, and um, that, that would be determined at the end of the you know the job because we wanted to see what was there and what would what would work. George, did you have a question? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, I'm sure Jack and I can work out a lot of the issues on my comments, but I have two that I haven't heard addressed yet, and I. I think they have to be addressed. Jesse, can you go to the drainage section, please? Mm -hmm. Is this it? The drainage in the rear of the building is at or slightly less than one foot cover. Minimum standards for uh, HDP pipe is one foot with rigid pavement. Asphalt is not rigid pavement. So right now the pipe is cannot withstand the loading of traffic as designed. Um, the other comment I had, can you go to the one that shows the parking spaces? So, Georgia, was this pipe here? On the back, yes. Might have been one of the side two, I forget. Um, I had suggested that the parking spaces on the side be angled. There's only 18 foot driveways coming in. Um, if you remember Sam's Bistro, one of your first ones, uh, narrow, narrow aisle behind the cars. It was difficult for access to vehicles. Uh, I think you can accommodate a slight angle to the parking spaces, still make it easy for not lose any spaces, and still make it easier for cars to access the spaces and leave. These ones here, George, on the south. The ones on the side there, and the ones on the right hand side, both sides of the building. It doesn't have to be a great angle, just even a little bit angles. A little bit of an angle is going to help. I think the ones in the rear, they have more area to maneuver, but on the sides of the building, if they were angled slightly. I think you should flip the handicap one, the handicap side. The that would help, too. I mean, you could flip the handicap and, uh, yeah. Right, because that'll give you more buffer from the street mm -hmm. side. Put the stripe, put the um, access side Hat, on the, the street side. The hatch in the middle between the two spaces. No, I would put it on the street side. Oh, yeah, that you, you could put do the that. hatching in this spot. Right, so now no one's no one's backing out from that first spot, right? Yeah, we give more clearance. Of yeah, the so you're already you're right. already another ten feet into the site before the first one. Yeah, and calling time to stop. Yeah, I think a slight angle in those spaces would do a world of good to facilitate movement of traffic in and around the building. Yeah. <clears throat> and it works well with the, the unidirectional flow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't have a solution for the cover. Well, I do, but I know Brandon doesn't want to hear it. <laughs> so the only solution is really to raise the site. Can you use different material? 
any of the pipes so uh, the 12 inches it covers the middle and it's all with rigid uh rigid, have, uh, what rigid if you service. use like ductile hmm? ductile iron it's still got it you're still to me you're still at a mi one foot minimum cover with rigid pavement which means poured concrete i haven't looked at it too closely but G george is right it's it's very shallow cover there i was thinking of taking that pipe offline doing some sort of underground storage area with an overflow manhole and then pipe out to either to the swale or directly to the rain garden. What's your depth between groundwater and uh, the rain garden? At two feet. Make it make it eighteen inches. You just gain six inches. Yeah. And a lot of times, off, if, and you if just I gain the berm, I was the extra six inches of berm elevation I was looking for. Works for me. See how we work that out. <laughs> <laughs> Say thank you, Brandon. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm processing right now. <clears throat> Brandon, what are your thoughts on the strike with the angle part as well? I like it. I, you know, whatever's easy. You know, I want. Um, you know, ease of access. I don't want to have issues with backing out. People, you know, almost getting accidents, and you know, um, you know, we talked about it. Jesse had written one of the comments was, you know, about making people in the park in the back. How can we make it easier for them to, uh, you know, get across the parking lot? I mean, it's not, I mean, it's a small, small lot. You can't really get too much speed, but um, you know, anything that makes it easier, people backing out, and you know, some of these people don't turn the next when they back out. So I think. Anything that makes it easy like that. What about your delivery staff? Would you have designated parking for them? Uh, well, the the employees are going to be in the back. Yeah, the tandem spot. Uh, as oh, far okay. as like the the people who are working. Right. Um, we also had discussed about um, you know sharing parking with another a butter. I already I asked one uh, Stone Ford. He said no. Um, Bank of America would be just too difficult to get a hold of anybody. And plus, I think a lot of people at Starbucks use that. I did talk to Mike Galenas at 34 um, Main Street, not 324 Main, the insurance company. Uh, he said after 4 o'clock he's out of there, so I could probably, he's got four spots. So if possible, I could, um, you know, put the cars, you know, my delivery drivers there. I would think you'd want to put your staff over there so your delivery drivers. Well, the, the tandem, right. yeah, but someone will block my uh, the drivers in if they park too far in on the tandem. You know what I mean? No, I just thought the delivery guys would be the first. Yeah, the, the first, first ones. Front. Delivery guys here, because you certainly want to, you wouldn't want the delivery guys having to walk. Right. Who would be the three up in the? Just any other, your other kitchen. Oh, yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. My kitchen, yeah, yeah staff kitchen down the drivers. Staff here. Yeah. Delivery drivers here, and then whatever other staff you might need yeah. go to the other site. Yeah, they're pretty. You know, it's you know they drive around. Though. <coughs> Sometimes it's easy if they park there on a Friday night. If it's real busy, they know instead of having to go around and then try to. They can't take a left on 28, so instead of getting stuck. Yeah. You know, yeah slower yeah, nights. Yeah. Slower nights is not an issue. It's just a Friday night. You just don't want them queuing here. This is. Yeah. One way, you know. Right. So you're thinking they would use those three spots and possibly some shared parking mm. with the insurance company? Yeah. Yeah, especially I mean for the evening staff, I mean you go over to the insurance company. Yeah, I think he's gone at say like four o'clock, so right. they could be no issue. And then for your deliveries, would that come in through the rear of the Yeah, the kitchen in the um, back right, that's um, a door with some bollards protecting it. And we go to the issue of the 18 wheeler. I talked to my provisions company. They do have a box truck for Boston deliveries. Um, so once we find out, you know, I wanted to see if there was any other options on Minot Street, but there's no parking on Minot Street. So um, it's going to be telling them either they deliver in the box truck or Caradonna, uh, another company that's what they deliver in is box trucks. So. Yeah, you got to do it. I've, I've been stuck on 28 while Domino's backs up their 18 wheeler across all four lanes. So yeah. if we don't allow it, somebody should stop them from doing it. They're always doing it. Just can't yeah, the, uh, I spoke with the police chief on this issue, and I mean, they're, they're struggling with some challenges over at Bagel World with the traffic that bags, backs up on Main Street. We certainly do not want to create a situation yeah. that's going to encourage that. Yeah. So, okay. uh, 
you know, restricting deliveries to box trucks or just requiring them to be on site. You know, he does not want to see them parked on Main Street, doesn't want to see them parked on Minot Street. So you think you have some options to get it into a box truck? Yeah, it's, okay. you know, I tell my company either bring the box truck, I'll go with, you know, the sure. Sheriff Don. I talk okay. to them, so. All right. uh, as far as trash, <laughs> um, my dumpsters are two yard roll arounds. So when they do come in, they have the front, um, they pick it from the front. So they'll roll out the dumpsters, they'll load them and then dump it like that. So that way they can still swing around. They don't have to worry about going out, you know, different ways like coming in the exit. They can come in the way they're supposed to come in and turn the the Have you spoken to the trash company about physically getting out of the truck to move the dumpster? They have to. Because these, these aren't um, the stationary ones. These are two, they have wheels on them. Yeah, so no. the way they can be situated, um, 28 would be this way. So you have, they have to actually come in, grab them, pull them out. Which is better because some of these guys might try to go in with their forks, move it around, and knock my my walls and uh, structure Just, down. I'm asking the question, have yeah. you physically breached yeah. the subject with the dumpster company? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. They currently do it now, my kids, so. Okay. There's a few other locations where they have to do this in town. The of Charles building is where they handle their um, their trash removals. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they don't, it's going to become an issue with the Board of Health, and I know Brandon certainly doesn't want that, so. Yeah, there's a move amongst most of them, not to get the drivers out of the truck anymore. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, George, are, are your comments, I, I'm looking at a memo from the 23rd that's pretty lengthy. It seems like a lot of it has been resolved or can be resolved. The two big items sound like they I, 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 I think most of them can be resolved, yeah, I think those are the biggest items. Can I bring up one, just to kick sure. this around, it was Please. one comment George had. I don't have the benefit of having my memo here. It's, uh, on a flash drive they don't have with me, so I couldn't even print it out to see what I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want it here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. There was just one comment we should talk about, and George will have input, but you, you, you might as well, you may as well. Um, State Road, we received the curb cut permit, two, two curb cuts. There were two existing on this site. Selectman policy allows one curb cut a lot unless you have over like 150 feet of frontage which this site does not um, so the question George put in his memo that this might require some sort of variance from the Board of Selectmen I'm thinking it's a state highway not sure if the Board of Selectmen would play into that but it's still a way within the town so I leave it to George or CPDC to give us some direction on where you think that might fall I'll answer that. I mean, it's something we'll ask the selectmen if they officially want the permit. Um, obviously, it's something our office is going to support because there's two existing driveways there. I mean, it's just that they're modifying their driveway, so technically they have to apply for a new permit. Okay. The board so. of selectmen would be interested in knowing what CPDC's position is. Obviously, if you issue a site plan approval showing two curb yeah. cuts, um, it's assuming that the applicants worked out any issues. CPDC at that point, so. Then I, I want to bring that up because I didn't want Brandon to go pull his permit, think he's all sure. set, and then all of a sudden he realizes he mm -hmm. has to go for the selectmen, notice neighbor, you know, and it delays him a few months. Sure. Good. The rest okay. is solvable. The alternative, right, on this site is to. <clears throat> would be to push the building back and have the all the parking have one driveway <coughs> entrance with the parking in front um, we're, we're not entirely sure you could get it off but um, but it that's certainly not what we we are or at least former members of the um, of the so Any other comments? <coughs> Anybody from the public here to ask questions, comments regarding this application?
move that the CBDC close the public hearing for the uh, site plan review of the Pizza World proposal of 306 Main Street. Second. All those in favor? Let's take a look at the uh, <coughs> I think it's pretty comprehensive. I don't think he sent me anything since then. Unless, oh, response to comments, we will add. He did provide those. So we did confirm that it's 32 seats. So I had a comment about that in draft decision. Um, he is requesting the waiver from the loading space, so you'll have to take a separate, separate vote on that if you choose to uh, grant that waiver. One more thing that we wanted to make sure the CPDC was aware, um, and I think we, I mentioned it to you, was about the site plan <coughs> and review application fees uh, for the project. He had submitted his fees with the previous submission. Um, we didn't get very far with that application, so he requested that we waived the fees. So um, I probably recommend that the CPDC take a vote to uh, carry those fees from the previous application. something on the site curbing as well. The waiver from site curbing? There, there is some site curbing, but it's not throughout. We can include a finding. Why do you need a waiver from site curbing if you're using the edge as a sheet flow into a drainage system? Well, I'm not sure if the regs actually you know, spell out that you need vertical granite curbing where basically 80% of our site is there's going to be no curbing because your regulations require that the sites be developed in accordance with the, the standards of the town and the standard of the town are granite curbing right so what if I'm over surface draining something to a corner and I want that to spill up it's not permitted unless you get a waiver you have to have a waiver for for low impact designs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that regulations okay. required for it? Do they actually technically have to vote, or is it the fact that it's on the? Because that's your yeah, that's your regulations. No, right? the, it's, it says that the site should be developed in accordance with the subdivision standards, and the subdivision standards are, are granite curbing. No, I understand the vertical granite curbing requirement, but I'm asking is, um, do you not allow drainage systems that would have to have an opening in that? We, yeah. Um, I see what you're, I understand what you're saying, but unfortunately, we, we haven't adopted new standards to okay. accommodate things like that yet. Okay. It's something we're going to have to. Yeah, it's 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 a. I think it's a formality. I mean, just to, to have a basis that's easy enough just to say that you're well, we need, a waiver. It's either a waiver or a finding, yeah. just a finding based yeah. on the on yeah. storm water management design sheet flow to, to the gutters that into it properly designed stormwater management system that curbing is not needed. Well, I think we'd do, we're better off to adding a, a waiver number three for the, with that wording. Jack just said. <laughs> you got to say it again, Jack. A second. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do we need air conditions regarding the 
changes we spoke about, moving the striping for the handicap parking, the angle of the parking, the pipe discussion we <laughs> you had, for less of a better term. So in here, which we've done before, I have a condition for the applicant shall submit a final site plan. We could put in drainage plan that incorporates changes requested by town staff and the CPDC. That may okay. can accommodate George's memo. Yeah. We've done the past, The request. Oh, so bad. Do we really need a revised rendering? I put that in as a placeholder. Um, I know. Well, we, we'd like to have a rendering with uh, uh, for, I, I, for what purpose? Only just because I know it costs money. I mean, if we're I, it. we do have a detail of the fencing. Um, okay. And we would, I'm assuming we'd follow the site plan because this clearly shows no landscaping in the patio area. I mean, I think that gives us a sense of what the building is going to look like. It'd be great if it was completely consistent with that site plan, but the site plan trumps. And I, I guess I don't want to spend money. <clears throat> so, are we there? So, I think with the architectural branding, the architectural plan we submitted did show the dimensionals. And the height of it. Um, we did receive the material for the facade, so I think you can actually delete number eight as well. Police department, fire department, they're doing everything. Yeah. This is something for the grease contaminants. I think, is there something from the, what was that for the fire department? So there's a couple of this jurisdictions. There's the plumbing code that they'd have to meet with any sort of grease containment and uh, the health code and the external grease containment was fine with the health administrator and then you do have the what do you have on the interior of your space underneath the sink yeah there'll be a grease grease uh, trap no they're not requiring external because okay. i don't have a dishwasher right it's just hand washing dishes okay. unit I okay. put two and then I just put two here at this little concrete right. apron. That's for the entryway, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, just uh, so as not to confuse things like on I'm on page seven, um, number five, prior to should be the see, when referring to the approved plan. 
that should probably be changed to reference the uh, approved final site plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not this plan that we're seeing here, but the one that is submitted um, to you. So, yeah. Because I can see that being as conditioned. Mm -hmm. right. right. uh, Disconnect at some point. Sure. That might be in here someplace else. Yeah, I'll make sure to. Uh so, just to confirm for, for lighting, we did receive a revised photometric. Um, you know, I did work with Brandon on this uh, quite a bit. There was his <coughs> original plan did show spill over beyond sort of that point one acceptability range with the CPDC. So he was able to get get it down to that range just using wall packs and no pool lighting. So it'll have two wall packs on the sides of the building and then it looks like three wall packs on the back. And then on the front he's proposing a series of goosenecks that are, will illuminate his sign in the front facade. And that will be the extent of his site lighting. <clears throat> the way I have this drafted also is, is um, the signage. You'll need to submit a more detailed plan to the signage when you get to that point. Actually, yeah, so since we probably want to add a condition restricting deliveries or indicating that deliver all deliveries have to be taken on site. So after occupancy, so I'll just call it. My recollection is that we only, we, the couple of times we got into that where it's either to restrict it from sort of peak period, mm -hmm. um, like Dunkin', Dunkin' Donuts on Main Street, mm -hmm. which they do anyways, um, uh, or um, when there was a residential Can we approve it first? Oh, and you provide to the loading space waiver, or do we need to vote on that first? Probably want to vote on first. Okay. Yeah. We get two waivers to vote on, right? Fees and loading space. Uh, oh. <coughs> and we do we add that to the site plan? Okay. Okay. Sorry. I just can't find really it sit correctly. <laughs> <laughs> Property 
main business at 306 Main Street, Pizza World. All those in favor? Move that the CPDC approve the waiver for vertical granite curbing uh, in the rear of the property um, areas that are used for drainage and infiltration um, purposes. Do we need that one? Do we need a vote on that? No. I don't think we need that one. I think, I think we just added it to the decision itself. We need to vote on it, though. Added as a finding? I thought we added it as a waiver element. If it's a waiver, it has to be in the waivers. Yeah. Just put it in there and then there's... <coughs> There won't be any problem if you vote on it. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Second. <laughs> All is in favor. And the uh, third one was? Application fees. Who uh, did the CPDC waive the application fee for the resubmission of a plan for which fees were previously uh, paid? Second. For the Second. All those in favor? Okay. Now. Now. <laughs> Move that the CBDC approve the uh, site plan review decision <coughs> for the uh, Pizza World uh, development project at 306 Main Street as amended. Second. All those in favor? Be finished before <coughs> the other one across the street. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they buy lumber by the pickup truck load. It's as if they're buying lumber by the pickup truck load. It's coming with a couple of two buys, put them up, disappear. They could very well be. All right, next on the agenda. Request for minor modification to site plan review Reading Woods landscaping building. Uh, you guys want to give us a quick overview? occupancy conditions for this building you know we had noticed that some of the vegetation um, the evergreens have not really taken it's, it's a very heavily shaded area so you know I had asked the uh, property owner to go back and take a look and make some recommendations for this um, I was not here during the original proceedings but my understanding is this was a big topic for screening um, to the adjacent residential neighborhood so the, um, the applicant had originally proposed um, a series of rhododendra uh, the CPDC wanted them to sort of take another look at that to maybe think about doing a variety of species not just the rhododendra so um, included in your packets is a pr proposal to do just that. They have a variety um, of rhododendra as well as <laughs> some, some grasses proposed. Um, I do believe we have some folks here. Um, I'll let them speak to the details. Um, so. My name is Chris Huntress. I'm with Huntress Associates. We're here representing Pulte Homes. With Pulte, who's here tonight to answer any questions. Um, so Jesse summarized it very well. Um, we had I was around for the original permitting and uh, design. There was uh, quite a bit of conversation about screening and buffering uh, to not just this side of the residential properties, but many of them. Um, what's happened in the field is there were nine evergreen trees, as Jesse had said, that did not survive. Um, not hugely surprising that a project of this size or really any planting plan loses you know, up to upwards of 10% of the plant material just in transplanting and moving plants around. Um, we did have these tested in here. We had the soil tested. It is rather acidic. It does get a lot of shade. Uh, so for those reasons, replanting the same thing just doesn't make a lot of sense because it already didn't survive once. Um, 
what we wanted to do, understanding that what, what the goal was, particularly in these plantings, was to shield headlights that come down this road at this row of residential abutters. Um, we did install a six foot solid board fence along the property line here, um, but, the, but the planting was really an additional um, measure of security, if you will, from a, from a screening perspective. Um, so in looking at the soils and looking at the shade, we're proposing a rhododendron. Um, we're proposing two types. It's the Catawba and the Rose Bay. Rose Bay gets upwards of 12 feet plus or minus. Um, the reason that we originally suggested just you know that one bit of plant material, there's a good picture of it, is that historically this is used around edges as understory to larger plants. It does like the shade. It does like the acidic soils. Um, and it really will form a mass, uh, which is what we're trying to do to replace that evergreen that, that wouldn't let it. Um, understanding that some variety was, was uh, requested, we changed up some of the species on either end and then added a front um, lower uh, story in front of the rhododendron, which would be a ornamental grass, uh, bayonet grass. And you can see that it's not quite that tall. The one in respect is a little bit shorter. But that's a, a good version of what, um, what you've got. Um, the numbers, there were nine evergreens that did not survive. We were replacing them at a three to one ratio with the rhododendron, um, which would be this 27 rhododendron in total. Let's see if I've got that right. Yep, 27 rhododendron. And then 17 of the maiden grass that would be in the, in the foreground of that. Um, plant material that goes in at three to four feet height for rhododendron is as large as you can commercially get for most rhododendron at a nursery without going to a specialized stock and a field picking and field growing those. But three to four feet is about as good a size as you're going to get um, on those and have a measure of, of uh, expected success. I could go with a bigger plant, but when you pick a bigger plant, you get less of a root ball right. and the chance of survival drops um, significantly. So for those reasons, we'd recommend that we stay in the standard nursery sizes, but be on the larger end of that, which is again that three to four feet. The um, maiden grass is uh, 18 to 24 inches. This is a perennial grass that can be cut down annually. Um, it will look kind of green and lush throughout the majority of the growing season. In the fall, it turns out kind of light brown um, and is quite attractive right up until the snowfall and then you cut it down, regrows again the next year. Any, uh, any questions? The, um, the trees that failed, what kind were those? Um, I believe they were uh, white vine that were in there that, that failed. And what was the expected height of those? The expected height? Would have, well, if it was white pine, it would have, you know, white pine will get upwards of 60 feet. Um, but what uh, was hard to see on the survey, which originally showed the existing trees significantly behind, <coughs> is that the canopy is up and arching over. So a taller tree would have, an evergreen tree particularly, would have grown into the into the canopy of the larger hardwood trees and created problems down the road. So um, for those reasons, we think those um, that understory growth is a better way to go and still achieves the same purpose. And the purpose is primarily to protect the neighbors behind and headlights right. and that sort of village. Well, I think it was more than just headlights. I mean, it was really to shield some of the buildings, too, because they are ugly. <coughs> well, it's not, it's not the only plant material that's on. There's still a lot of plant material on this edge that did survive. There are shade trees and plant material out um, within these grounds that is doing quite well. Uh, it's really these that were a little bit further in. Uh, and they are right at the end of this row, which the evergreens were here for the... Do we think that the place. roads will get up to the underside of the canopy? Do I think the, the, the rhododendrons will get 12 to 15 feet in height. Um, hmm. I'd say the canopy is right about there. Any questions? Do you feel this addresses the concerns that we had in our mm -hmm. previous meeting? It's a better mix. I just don't, you know, what are we going to do? Make them plant more evergreens? They're just going to die. They're not going to take. That's why we had the soil tested to yeah. see what the yeah. real problem was, uh, to understand whether we just move the evergreens forward or not. Does acidic soil significantly reduce what you can possibly plant 
period? Um, does that really isolate you to just a few certain there are certain plants that do better in acidic soil than others. Uh, certain plants do better in base soils than others. So, um, yeah, it changes your plant palette a little bit. Um, but the rhododendron actually thrives in acidic. They like the acidic soil. Okay. They like the shade as well. So they be <coughs> very well acclimated. Yeah, they, should, they should take pretty well. Yeah. We shouldn't uh, trim them down. We should just let them grow. I would let them grow into a mass. Yeah. And just let them be look like one plant. You know. That okay, so I don't know that we need to add that as a condition or, or finding or something, just so it's understood that these won't be trimmed down to be little shrubs. They're mm -hmm. they're supposed to grow big and block it up. The, the, uh, the grass looks. I mean, is, is this sometimes called the uh, Scotch broom? The, the there are many different varieties of the ornamental grasses. That's one of them. Okay. Um, I mean, it's, I'm familiar with it. I have it next to my house down at the Cape. Okay. Right next to a rhododendron. Yeah. So <laughs> I know that it works. Something like that. Move that the CPDC approves the minor modification for the screening. Uh, Oops. You do want to determine it's a minor mod. Thank you. <laughs> Move that the CPDC determine that the change to the landscaping plan um, as proposed for uh, Reading Woods is a minor modification. Move that the CPDC approve the minor modification for the uh, landscaping plan at One Jacob Way for Reading Woods as amended. Thank you very much. Chili's is undergoing a re-imaging. I'm sure you've seen some other locations in the area sort of have a different um, look to their their graphics and their signs. So uh, they are undergoing a re-imaging here in Reading, and they've submitted a sign package um, depicting changes to the facade as well as to the signage here. This was last looked at by the CPDC in 2002. Uh, as part of this special permit for Walker's Brook, they were required to undergo what was called design review approval um, for the facade and the signage, and a copy of that is included in your packets. What's interesting um, about that approval is, and you, I'm sure you noticed, they have a number of signs on the building than is typically allowed in other districts in town. Um, they're also proposing some facade improvements. They've depicted those here um, on their elevation drawings. They're limited to painting of the facade and painting of the existing gooseneck lighting, as well as switching out the existing awnings. The, um, the wall signs, and I can let the applicant go into a little bit more detail, but they do have um, an exposed neon element. The existing building does have some exposed neon currently. Uh, they are proposing a little bit more um, on the signage that, that they have shown here. I do have some um, examples of those, uh, what that looks like. I did include that in your packets, and then I also have some photos of the existing building to sort of compare um, as we work through the application. 
So with that, um, I will let the applicant go into a little bit more detail. Okay. Uh, good evening. For the record, my name is Heather Dudko, and I'm working with National Sign, the sign installer for Chili's. And with me tonight is Sean Leonard, who's the area director for Chili's. Um, as Jesse said, there is a remodel um, that will go underway at the site um, that will include replacing the signage, some painting, and the awning and recovering. Um, I don't know if it would be easiest maybe to just go through the proposal sign by sign um, to just give a little overview of what they'd like to do, and then we could answer any questions. Sure, yeah. Okay. So currently, um, I think we could start with the ground sign, the monument sign, that, must, that would probably be the easiest. Um, they're just proposing to reface their existing panel, and that will be an opaque background, so the light will only show through the graphics and the pepper. And currently, the macaroni grill panel has been removed. Let's point that. The four lease. Where's the four lease? Yeah, it says four lease. Yeah, they've been out of business for a while. So that's the extent for the monument sign. There'll be no change to the structure at all, it'll just be a new panel with a new framework. When you say the light comes through the pepper, do you mean the, the gray outline as well? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, for the building sign, um, on the front elevation, they would like to remove, they have an existing oval sign that reads Chili's, which is the exposed neon. They would remove that sign and replace it with the pepper at 48 square feet. So there's the existing. And then they would remove the 3D pepper graphic and replace it with the word chilies on the raceway. So that's on that's in your packet. So just to give you just to give a quick idea, that's yeah. Yep. Okay. Do we have a relatively recent existing condition? Yep, I took these photos on Friday. So, as Jesse explained, the existing chilies above the pepper, that is an exposed neon sign. And then the pepper is just a 3D formed uh, graphic that has some lighting underneath it. Mm -hmm. So those both would be removed and replaced with the proposed. So the chilies, the the pepper in this picture, which is also the same sign proposed on the side elevation, which I'll, I'll just note, um, that is, it's built like a channel letter. It's offset, you can see from the installation drawing, that it's offset from the, from the panel a little bit. So it is a facelit and sort of backlit as well. And then within the red pepper, there is exposed neon. So that would, that would look like the existing chili sign with the exposed neon. And then the Chili's lettering is a face lit letter <coughs> on the raceway. So the Chili's lettering, um, where, um, how is that configured on the top of the awning? So right, that because right now the, the big um, plastic chili yep. sits on top of the awning. Yep. So as you show it here, the chili sign is going to be on top of the awning. Is that out front or is that back against the wall? Do you, does that show that on It here? doesn't show the side, no, but it would be, it would be, if you looked from the side, it would be parallel. So it would be, it would not sit back on the awning. Unless it would be correctly. flush with the front of Correct. the Correct. So Correct. if you look at it from the side, it would all be one you're plane. Gonna see, you're going to see, you see the side, or if you drive, if you look at the building from an angle, you're going to see the back of the joints of the, of the raceway letters. I think it would be very tough to see the back. It's on the right elevation. The, the, <coughs> yeah. the thing is the canopy is sort of centered and it's up on a hill. I don't know that you can ever get it. An angle. And that's a solid wood structure, not an arm. I think it might just be helpful if I just run through all of them mm -hmm. and we could just go back if there were questions. Um, on the left side <coughs> elevation, 
where the to go, there's a to go projecting sign, an oval, that will be refaced. And that will be opaqued as well. That's oh, an existing sorry. sign. There you go. And they currently have on the left elevation a flat, non illuminated panel that leads chilies. So that would be removed, and they'd like to replace it with the same pepper that would be on the front. Yeah. So that's yeah. the, the left page, side elevation. The left elevation? Yeah. Page 112 versus 115 or whatever. <laughs> They also have a small to-go sign on the awning that would be removed. On the right side elevation, there currently is an existing non-illuminated sign that would be removed and not replaced. on the right side would be removed and not replaced. And on the rear elevation, there is an existing illuminated sign that reads Chili's. And that would be replaced with a pepper as well. But that would not have the neon in it. That would just be a face, a backlit, I'm sorry, a backlit sign. So it would be off the building a little bit and the light would shine through the back and it would just kind of give a halo effect. Jesse, once you have the image open, just go back and forth with the arrows <laughs> at the bottom of that software that you're using. See the little play buttons at the bottom? That'll let you go back and forth. You want me to go back and forth right now? No, I mean if oh. you're needing to, oh. if you're looking for that particular image. Oh, okay. that's great how she does that up there. Um, as Jesse mentioned, there would be some painting. The awnings would be recovered. The structures would stay in place, and they would recover the awnings. I do need to note that Chili's would like to put some pepper images and we're not quite sure how that's handled, um, if that counts to a signage or not, so that, that's a question. The existing light fixtures will be painted black and they would also like to uh, talk about an LED border around the perimeter of the building. It's an orange illuminated border on the perimeter. <clears throat> it's almost like a, it's an enclosed light fixture, almost like a, what did we say, it looked like a light rope? Yeah. A light rope. So that's the extent of the proposed changes. I'm sure there's some questions. <laughs> so, I'm sorry, going back to my first question, there is an elevation here, that's what you're trying to point at that shows how that front sign is, um, is Yeah, left is and right. The, oh, right. Yes, right here. Structure. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. The fine. And yeah. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. They wouldn't be able to see the back. Just from the start. I'll follow them. So that, um, that's an enclosed channel letter, facelit only, so the back would be closed on that as well. Just so if you were to see the back, just to save your okay. point, yeah. it would be an um, enclosed letter. Okay. Yep. And then you said, I just want to make sure I understood this, um, the awnings, the cloth awnings mm -hmm. are, you're going to switch them out with something else, but they're still going to be there's still going to be awnings. Correct. There. The framework will stay in place on the building, mm -hmm. and they'll recover with the, with the fabric awning. But there are some right. graphics on that. I just don't. Right. I just want to make sure that people that we point that out. I don't want that to slide by. Well, technically, it's a sign if it has the chili graphic on it. Yeah. When I when I spoke with uh, Russ, Russ yeah. I've been working with a different gentleman from National Sign Company. He had he had indicated that. You know, he and other communities that they've come up against that it is additional signage. We would constitute an additional signage, and um, in in that particular community, they were only allowed to go with this sort of star graphic. What graphic? 
this star uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, because this would constitute additional signage, this pepper. Yeah. pepper. I, I so think that's the way that our, our, ours reads as well. It does, and I just don't want to open up a can of worms somewhere else. I, I wouldn't necessarily be opposed to it in this zone, but that's the way the code's written. I don't yeah. want to deal with it somewhere else. Yeah. These awnings are a hell of a lot better than what you have up there now. Yes, they are. Um, so that's definitely that's definitely agreeable. We'll take the the peppers off and, and replace with the star. You can do the star. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me just pull up the. Um, I think the way it's written is it just it can't be the logo. Right. Because that then so right. it's so much trouble. Yeah. Or if they just had the apostrophe. <laughs> How much of the logo constitutes the logo? <coughs> More than that. You think? Interesting. I'll have to talk about that when we get into signage. Well, if it were, given that the apostrophe is actually the stem of the, the chili pepper, right? you could argue either way. But it's an, an apostrophe as a graphic element is unlikely to be you know, considered a standalone logo. Let's talk about this left elevation here where they want to take off the chili sign and put in the pepper logo. Yes. But you're saying that's going to be illuminated? Correct. And then have goosenecks over it? Correct. That's silly. Which, which elevation, I'm sorry? The left. left. The left elevation. The goosenecks are existing. Yeah. Yes. <coughs> this is the existing facade. Yeah, is it four goose next? Is it four or three? Three. Three. Mm, yeah. And the yeah. turn sign is not illuminated? <coughs> Correct. Internally illuminated? Nope, it's an aluminum panel, a flat aluminum panel. Well, we might reasonably suggest that the one with the goosenecks not be internally illuminated or backlit. So it's, it's illuminated by two methods. You have the exposed neon, and then you have the halo effect. Correct. For the proposed left. So elevation. halo, neon, and gooseneck. Mm -hmm. wow. So it looks okay. like Ludicrous. this. Yeah. I might have a... Mm, Yeah, this is the best one I have. And that's how you do it at your other locations? That's, the, that's a, the standard. Um, but like you say, I mean, each, you know, yeah. there's room for negotiation. So this pepper is the one that's proposed on the rear facade. It is only have the halo effect. Correct. No exposed. You have, yeah. a, you have a night no image exposed. of that? On the rear, we have it proposed <coughs> on the rear of this building, um, yeah, right, right here. Yeah. No, I mean, do you have a, a <coughs> night picture? It's right the photo. same as this one. Um, I know the quality is not great, but this is what it, it's the same one. Yeah, but the front lights are killing the halo effect, apparently. Yeah. So would a reasonable alternative be to have the same sign, but not have it they could put a, um, a face on it. Right. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out whether perhaps just have having, the, having the halo and the goose next would be okay. What's what's happening on the uh, Longhorn logo? Because they wanted to do a lot of neon too, and we didn't let them. So on the front, on their parking lot side, on their entrance side, they've got a chimney, I think, or a stone stack, and they have their brand logo. Yeah, and I, it's either halo is lit. Great. Is it halo lit? Mm. Let's see. I don't. I wasn't here during that, so I'm not. No, they've got. They've got the. Uh, oh, I the can't steer see. Longhorn thing on the chimney. Yeah, it's in the parking lot side. I don't think you'll yeah, catch it. Yeah, I don't here. think I'm gonna be able to see it. So. This is just another example of the, you can see the exposed neon here. Mm -hmm. Is it really neon or is it LED? It's neon. I believe it's neon. Yeah. 
Why are people still doing that? I mean, it seems to me like the, you're just asking for it to fail, and then it's going to look like junk. Yeah, I don't know why people still use Neon. Uh, <laughs> we did ask for some Lumen information, so we do have that. Um, He also was able to add the lumen output of, uh, per foot for the LED border that's on top, of, that's proposed at the top of the building. So at this point, the existing building has the exposed neon on the front side, front facade, and exposed neon band on the blade side. I think that's the only areas where they have the exposed neon at this point. And the blade sign will be refaced to a flat face, which will be opaque, so that neon will be removed on the to-go sign. Hmm. I'm okay with that sign. That's just halo lit on the rear. Okay. Um, so something like that could be designed for the left side. It would not have the neon. It would just have the halo on the back. That would be much better. I think that'd be okay. And keep the green signs or remove them? No, you have to keep them. Yep, I'm going all around. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Keep them there. I mean, that's the, the side uh, adjacent to the entry driveway. Right, okay. I mean, the, what's there now is, is a little bit garish and a little bit on that particular side. So there is no lack of illumination. Yes, sir. Uh, Tony Duresso, 130 John Street. I'd like to know why the applicant is looking for more signs than are permitted in the PUDI. Under section 111564C, they're only allowed one wall sign per building or tenant for tenants or buildings facing more than one street highway. One additional sign for that tenant is allowed facing such a street highway. They're only facing one street. Yeah, but the, the, the decision seems to have given them these other signs. Right. Is it the precedent that's in place? No, no precedent. Just the decision, strictly the decision. That's what I would look at. So they were granted, the, the building was granted four signs in 2002, so they're asking to replace four signs. Is this an opportunity to bring them more in conformance with the zoning bylaw? Seems to me. No. So the, the PUDI language, when I, when I took a look at it, um, page, um, section 11.1562, says the CPDC reviewed all allowed signage pursuant to the requirements of 11.1564 and shall use the following additional criteria to determine, unless otherwise provided for in this section, 11156, the number, sizes, dimensions, and locations of signs for the lot. I'm assuming that that is the language that the CPDC relied upon in 2002 to grant the approval for the signage shown on these, exist these uh, old drawings here. certainly is more than what we allow in business A and business B. But we do have an approval on, on the property as well as a building permit for these signs from 2002.
I mean, I'm not inclined to reduce the amount of signs that they were allowed to have in this location because I think uh, there's a whole facade that's blank, you know, on the Honda mm -hmm. side, right? Um, I'm trying to be more careful about how much lighting they end up with because even though it's sort of an industrially lit site, it's still, it still could be overlit. I, mean, I think your pepper's got too much light in it. I don't know how that really works. Um, I'll you know, it's your standard. But if you look at the photo of that night shot, mm -hmm. the big chilies is mm -hmm. all illuminated, and then the pepper's all illuminated. And that's probably really what you see from a distance. I know the photo's not very clear, and if mm -hmm. I sat there and shot it right, you'd probably see the lines, but it just bleeds into itself. See how the the, yeah. the, um, the goosenecks are nice and subtle. They light up the awnings. That, that works fine, but those lights are just so bright on the sun. It's just a big waste. You mean where the pepper? The pepper? Yeah, the pepper's yeah. just mm -hmm. overlit. The chilies is too overlit too, I think. A little too chunky, but it's just that's just my opinion. Well one second here. What about the neon lighting along the top? Yeah. We that got is, burnt on that, that once LED. before and I just think that's gaudy and obnoxious. Because we told we don't like to see the actual light source. Mm -hmm. And the LED strips will have the little, mm -hmm. the diodes or whatever they are that, that are running along there, and the shell that protects it will actually reflect that diode. So you see the rope, you see the rope effect, the little Christmas light effect, as opposed to, say, a, um, a more subtle halo effect. I, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be in favor of adding that a bit much. No, I, I agree. I mean, it's basically, the, without the rope, I think we're in good shape. <coughs> well, you do have another question? Uh, I was just referencing the uh, neon, or the LED. Uh, Section 8.2.5E prohibits uh, self illuminated backlit signs which use LCD, LED, electronic messaging, or digital technology. Neon or similar signs. So if this is basically similar to neon, that would be prohibited in 8.2.5e. However, under PVDI code, I do believe the 8.2.5e is referenced as prohibited. But we have tried and successfully prohibited uh, Longhorn from doing the same thing. Right. That's why I was surprised that it was on this building, but it's already there. So we're actually taking away one neon sign mm -hmm. on the to-go thing. Does the decision actually talk about neon sign? No, it does not. It references the drawings. I'm just curious, the neon sign, is that somewhat required for your gray standards? In, in newer, in newer um, design, it has become all through the uh, majority of the country and probably, it's probably right now in about 900 of 1,100 restaurants would soon be all of 1,100 restaurants with all that design, with all that type glow stick. It's not, I wouldn't say, not neon or LED, it's more of a a lightly subtle, soft, but a glow stick appeal. And right now, throughout the country, there's probably close to a thousand of them that are in, in place in construction. In construction. Okay. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, uh, so what I heard was that <coughs> not every restaurant has it. Uh, that there are the, exceptions. The exceptions are that they just haven't been remodeled yet. Those restaurants haven't been remodeled yet. Mike, um, I mean, at first I'm not opposed to it, I think it kind of goes with the sex mix theme. <coughs> but, I mean, it takes all these points, there, there is 
There have been situations where we're not allowed it. Um, I'm just going to consider if we disallowed it across the street. Uh, here, it seems that, you know, I wouldn't hear from you those kind of Was it the same so, material, same type of? Uh, they want to run LED, um, neon around the building. And I think their logo had a lot more lighting. It might have been made. Actually, the logo might have been made, made of neon as well. And we convinced yeah, them. Obviously, it's not neon. Okay. The border. The border, yes. The pepper has neon in it. Yeah. Actually, how many detail of oh, this, this might be it here. So this light line work, this is supposed to be, this is the neon? This yes. light line work yep. here? So yeah. All of this? Yeah. That's probably why it's bleeding out. So you can see in this existing yeah, okay. in this photo where the neon bands are. It's not great, but yeah. So at this location, it almost seems like they have neon within their chilies. I text. Think so. I think it's just a recessed face. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's hard. To, yeah. Yes, these Chili's letters are a flat acrylic face. So do you have any alternatives to that design that don't, that don't have the neon on it? The pepper? Yeah. Well, it would be a, a flat face, um, you know, like a, like a channel letter. You'd face. still want it lit. Uh, yes. I mean, there's this design where it's just sort of the halo illuminated. So, uh, show so me the halo on that. I thought the halo was around the entire sort of outer perimeter. You're saying that it's halo lit around the characters and the pepper? Yes, that sign on the rear elevation yeah. would be set off from the building. That's set off 14 inches. about four inches. And then the, the the light shines through the back, so it would illuminate the entire, the entire, like, graphic. But that's a flat face. So is this actually one that actually is flat an structure then? Yeah, okay. that's actually an aluminum. If we look at the drawing, it's a flat aluminum graphic set off from the building. So it's not built like a channel letter. It's just a flat aluminum. Whereas the sign on the front and on the side is built like a letter like a, with a cabinet. So the only, I would think the alternative would, would only would be to have a red face. You'd have a red face on it. Yeah, we, we, so you would cover the exposed neon and make it a softer type of light then? It wouldn't be exposed. You'd have a face on it. Yeah, faced over that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <coughs> and that's something that is doable to uh, Yeah. To mm -hmm. Well, I can't hear the band. Well, better? that's what they're asking for on the left side elevation as well, not the exposed neon on the left. So I thought that the left elevation was going to be like this. You wanted that, correct? No, the left and the front, it's built like a channel letter. It's mm -hmm. a cabinet. Right. And then they would have illumination inside with a face, but you'd also have some. You'd also have light in the back. But I heard discussion that the sign on the left elevation should only have the halo, which is the back lip. Left and face. left and rear should be the same. Yeah. Well, it's two. Those are two different. They're two different. Um, they're manufactured different. No, but they should be the same. We don't want. Neon and halo and goosenecks on the left side, or at least I don't want. Stop no, talking really for the no, board. No, no, I understand that. So I understand that. No neon on the left, just backlit. But they they're manufactured different. So if you if you're asking for them to be identical oh. signs, they would. We need to talk about that because they man each sign is manufactured a little different. Why would you do that then? Why would you build this? This whole contraption without any of the neon in it. For the rear? The rear is just a flat sign with some backlighting. Right. It's a flat aluminum panel. And the left side, we talked about not having the neon and the backlighting and the goosenecks. Right. So if you're not going to have the neon, why wouldn't you just build it, 
Looking at the same as your same mirror sign. Yeah. Yeah, illuminated by the group. So thing. this sign would be on the back, and it would be on the left. I mean, why, why go to the expense of building this cabinet yeah. with all the neon so holders in place? Yeah, you'd have two of these. Correct. On the left and the rear. Yeah. And those two sides, as long as they're the same size, and then the So now the front one, <clears throat> the front one we need to figure out. What's, first, what's worse? We don't allow neon, but somehow they got neon. So because there's a yeah there is a strange sentence in <coughs> section eight which was formerly section six in the old bylaw. Um, it says the uh, the CPDC may consistent with subsection eight point one allow modifications to any provision of the section. And the decision specifically references only the PUD. So I think they just went just with the PUD. They did not consider the other section of the bylaw. What would this alternative look like that we were describing? It would basically be the sign that we've proposed for the side and the rear? No, the I, th now? I think I it would look like your box, mm -hmm. like your, uh, your um, <coughs> pole sign, right? Yeah. I, th I think on the front they would prefer to install it with the face and have it look more of a channel letter than the flat aluminum that we're talking about on the left and the, because mm -hmm. it will have more depth on the front. Um, Okay. So it would be, it would look like that. There'd be the neon would not be exposed. I mean, I don't, I don't know why they wouldn't use neon. I wouldn't think after they need to put a face on it. So it would just, they'd cover it with a red face, and it would be internally illuminated. And the chilies would follow that same design. Well, the yeah, the chilies is already. Well, the chilies is already. Already internally chain. illuminated. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. I thought it would. That's a self-contained channel letter. Got it. Okay. So, do we need to be specific about that? As um, you know, would there be even with like a face on it? If you have a neon strip on the inside, I'm assuming mm -hmm. you'd still be able to to see that, right? Which or is which is I mean that you, you know that a big red pepper internally illuminated is going to be. So if they if they traced out the same neon tracing, but it was behind a translucent face, translucent colored face, the light would be coming from from what would have been the exposed neon. But why would they? They're not. That's they not the way that you, you you wouldn't build a sign with the neon in there. Correct. With the expensive neon. With the, with with the, the well, you, you wouldn't use neon anymore. Face on it. You wouldn't use neon. You'd use what? LED. Right. You're, you're going to do it similarly to how. The only reason I'm saying that is because even though yeah, it's translucent that's... and behind the panel, the the light source will give you the hot spots, and so you'll still get some dimensional look to it because it'll have these hot spots yeah. to it. Mm -hmm. Similar to how this is, you know, they have the LED lighting. I mean, if they did a string of LEDs behind that, like I said, you still are going to have some dimension. Now, if they, the proposed sign on the front, the pepper, was proposed with the, ne the neon, but also backlit. So now, if we put the face on it and have LED inside, would they still be allowed to have the backlit as well? So they would have a halo effect on the, on the back and light, light through the face. Personally, I think I just want to make sure I think it's going to end up looking better with the neon in the backlit than the big um, channel pepper. It reducing the neon overall from what's there now, correct? Well, it's a big giant three-dimensional pepper right now, right? No, the neon, the the um, existing oval sign is all neon. It's all neon. All neon. Yeah. The yeah. pepper is not uh, illuminated. The neon runs around the outside of the thing, and the, and the pepper itself is no, not, it's not yeah. lit inside or, or anything. Listen, chili, I agree. I agree that. Letters are all, right, Correct. We all have the chili letters. Right, the perimeter and the chili's lettering yeah. is all neon. Yeah. 
So it's reducing the neon. Believe it or not, I think that the neon sign is better for that front. What I'm concerned about is if we are protected from being able to, because Longhorn's going to be here next week if you approve this. Are they in the PUD? No, they're on. They're just. Uh, I don't think they were constructed with a PUD special permit. I so think they're, they're just, just business. They might just be industrial. They're just industrial. I, I haven't looked at that file, yeah, so I'm not sure. Um, I, mean, I, I think that what was approved for this building is unique to the to this building and in the PUD. Mm -hmm. It's got you know, four exposed sides. It's approached from three sides. Think about it. You actually approach it from the back, just like you have mm -hmm. to come around it. So it's appropriate for it to have that sign on the rear so people know where they're going. Um, I think if, if, we can, if we're convinced that we're protected, that this is a very unique situation, I'd be okay with that, just that front sign. Having, having, having it as proposed, right. I mean, even if Longhorn came in, and if it is a PUD, which I'm not 100% certain you have that discretion built into the language, you know, well, if you can make that rationale that it's appropriate chilies for this site, you would need to make that determination that it's not appropriate or appropriate for Longhorns. Which is no problem. <laughs> I mean, the, the existing decision for Chili's, I mean, back to 2002, I mean, is uh, a special permit specific to the building and the location and so on and so forth. So it's, you know, I don't think we're, uh, setting any general generic uh, precedent. So just to summarize, kind of like the front signage, I yeah. think we agree will remain as is been proposed. This side and the rear, if we want the signs to be similar, similar but the same side right. should be used. But you, but you want it only backlit. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Only that foot. And then no neon. LED border. LED border. Yeah. And the to-go sign reface is okay, and the monument sign reface is okay. Yep. Yeah. And those would be okay. Yes. <coughs> and the awnings. The awnings. Star. Star. Yeah. Star. Yeah. Star. Yeah. Star. Yeah. Yeah. Star. 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 Which sign was that? The, uh, the flat, the backlit sign. Well, those aren't opaque. The, the only ones that are opaque are the, the to-go reface, which is an acrylic face, and the acrylic face of the monument sign. So the light will only show through the graphics in those two. But the sign on the left in the rear elevation will be a, a flat aluminum sign. A flat aluminum sign with just a backlight. Right here. This is so yeah. aluminum this is, not is, is generally opaque. Oh, is that what you're talking about? That yeah. Sign? The gray, the green, and the red, and the white are all translucent. Correct. Correct. So the black is opaque. Only the black is Only opaque. Only the black. Yep. Actually, that is not a sign. Similar to that sign, it was just the pepper and the S. This one here? That's On the rear. That's right. the rear. But that, that, actual, that actual face is not the the light just comes through the back. It's an aluminum panel. It's halo lip as an aluminum panel. Which is not what I'm hearing her say. I'm hearing her say it's backlit, which to me has always been the light shines through the sign. No, no, no. Okay. Okay. So it is a halo where Correct. the light shines around the Correct. sign. Correct. 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 Thank you. And that will be on the rear and on the left side. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Do you have a set of these that can be marked and stamped? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. I have one 
last question. Um, originally, the pepper on the rear elevation is proposed at 44.3 square feet, and on the left at 48. Would you want the sizes to match on each of those? Mm -hmm. Sure, make them both 44. Okay. She gave me a choice. <laughs> Well, actually, I would think that's what they would do because they would they would build two, two of, of what was proposed on the rear. Yeah. <coughs> okay, so the so, um, so sizes will be based on. Forty-four So it'll be this size on both sides. Two of those. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, looking at the actual. Specification here. Oh. It says we've got uh, 8 inch aluminum panel construction, white LEDs mounted on the back of the pepper to reflect off the background. Pepper spaced off the background 4 inches, background spaced off the wall 2 inches. So we've got a 3 layer. Thing going on. So we're not we're not halo lighting the <coughs> uh, wall of the building. We're halo lighting against the sign. Second layer of the sign. Now I happen to think that that would look very good. So it's hard to tell. So the light is in between the green and the gray, and in, in between the red and the gray. So no, that's, it's, it's one formed panel. This would be one formed panel? No, that's not what you're no. saying. That's not what the section shows. The section shows that the, um, that the pepper, the, Apostrophe and the S are pa are painted aluminum in the front, and then the brushed aluminum gray is the back board upon so which the light, light shines goes through. In. in between these two aluminum faces, right? Oh, that's not how I understood it. But. I mean, it actually, I mean, you get more of a soft look. I don't know if that matters so much. It's still, yeah. still backlit. What I would note on this drawing, though, is that all conduit shall be hidden. Say that again? Conduit. The conduit shall all be hidden. Right now, they're just showing the conduit running up the wall. I don't want to see a, an aluminum conduit running up to a sign. I don't want to see a painted conduit. There shouldn't be any conduit shown. Does it? Sloppy. On the back side, you mean? Yeah. Well, these are the presentation faces, though. This is not not the service area. <coughs> so, does anybody care about this dimensionality to the sign? Do we just want a flat panel? No, I think the dimensionality is in fact better. Yeah. I brought it up okay. because you uh, you shouldn't should not expect a single panel. Okay, so what if um what if they're actually manufactured in in one piece? Do we care? So the rear and left side signs, which are only halo lit. Currently, the section shows it as a dimensional sign, as, as several pieces with the light shining on the back piece. Right. But what if they're as she she thought they would be, that they're just coming as one solid piece in their back lit? Does it matter to us? I don't want to have to bring them back in here for yeah. that. I'd rather have Jesse. You know, I only thought because it, the description as the cloud, 
cloud flat panel. Oh, that's on the back. Yeah, okay, that's we're not. Yeah, right. Separate mounted, separate well, see, it could be two different things now. There could have, there could be an additional layer to the sign that's not showing up, which is that brushed aluminum. Well, he has the he has the brushed aluminum right here. There's the backer panel, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then that's the brushed that's aluminum. That's bigger than the sign, so that either represents the grill or the gray area. Um, or there's another yeah. panel behind this that we're not seeing. Oh, the other one. Yeah, that's the one that's that's the one 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 that's Okay. So it's unclear whether that sign is, whether that piece of aluminum panel is the shape of the sign or it's just a big rectangle. Well, well, it's the shape of the sign. The backer would be the shape of the sign. But I was unclear that these were separate pieces in front of the backer. Well, it's, it's not clear. Yeah. Either way, though, yeah. I'm saying even there a, might be the, the brushed aluminum pieces clear. back here, potentially, and that this is all one piece. Yeah. All right, so I think, Jesse, you're going to have to get some more information on that, what that sign actually looks like. Is that it right there? It, it is, but even this, you can't. But that one, yes, you can. That one is doing exactly what David said. See the halo lighting coming off the S onto the aluminum backup, <coughs> onto the gray? Yeah, you can see it there. So is this one flat uh, panel or yeah. is it dimensional? That is three-dimensional, right? The S, the apostrophe, and the pepper are in front of the gray background. Yeah. Right. And the light is shining onto the gray background, not onto the building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they didn't bother to hide the uh, construction behind it, which is stupid again. No. Yeah, I think. Yeah. So that's going to have more of an appearance as a, that's going to have more the appearance of a lit sign as opposed to the subtlety of a true halo. I think you're better off making a flat sign and halo lighting it. I sort of like that. But <laughs> 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 All right, but we're not going to do that and have the goosenecks. That's different now. This works on the back side, on the rear, because the rear has no lighting. There's no right. goosenecks. Yeah. Right. Right. So, would you prefer it to be more of this, the the one that was proposed on the left, that's more of a, a cabinet with like a channel letter, but not have it face lit, and just have it back lit, and that would be that would be true backlighting against the brick. But that would look more like a. Um, well, I mean, alternatively, cabinet. you could um, do just. Right now, it's just a flat wall sign. Take out those three goosenecks. No. No, I'd rather not have a lit sign. I'd rather have the goosenecks lighting the sign. Mm -hmm. Plenty of lighting on site. I'd rather you just did a flat sign and didn't light it. That's me. Like what's there now? Yeah. Just build this as the way we thought it was, where this <coughs> is just one big flat piece with the graphics applied to that gray background. And just light it from the top. And just light it from the goosenecks. I mean, fine. Better than what's there now. Certainly. I agree. So it would just look like this. It would just be a flat, yeah. A flat pepper rest. Just a flat aluminum, non aluminum sign. Yeah, we're trying to do some stuff. Save you an extra piece of condo. No. <laughs> we're going to have to go through this page by page to make sure I get it all. Uh, right. The rear is okay as. The rear is going to be this one, right? 
Right. As, yeah. as shown. I mean, I yes. think that's how yeah. the drawings are shown. Correct. Correct. Right. Yeah. And then non-eliminated flats on the left. So what I have here is, this, these are our findings. The facade improvements are limited to the existing painting of the existing siding, painting of the existing gooseneck fixtures, installation of new awnings, as depicted in the approved drawings. So that's condition number two. Awnings will be revised per condition two below. The strip of LED accent lighting. We're going to not allow that. Correct. This, um, revised drawings conditioned above. of the proposed LED accent Freestanding sign will be replaced with a new face. There are no conditions with that. I do have a condition to provide a sample because sometimes okay. it's actually not truly opaque. Yep. <laughs> um, the applicant is proposing a front and backlit halo pepper on the front facade and will be illuminated internally with neon elements and backlit by LED lighting. So we were comfortable with that. And that the way it's the way it's shown, correct? I don't know if I would say illuminated internally. I would say because it's not covered with a face. And typically, when we say internally illuminated, we're talking about a channel sign with a face. Just will be illuminated with neon elements. Uh, the front. Yeah, the front. The front face is illuminated with neon elements. That will be. Mm. What are you you're looking at findings number nine? Oh, no. Neon no. elements and backlit no. by no. LED lighting. The applicant is proposing a chili sign on the front facade that will be channel illuminated. The proposed blade sign on the left elevation will be internally illuminated with a neon band around the sign. We're okay with the neon band? No. No, that's on the, the no, it's on, on the, the, the blade side. sign. No, the blade sign. No, there'll be no neon. There'll just be a new face. We're limiting that to neon. But the, it says in here that the existing neon board is the neon. So, how did yeah? <laughs> Do you have a picture of that sign? Uh, I think yeah, the, the existing. The neon is probably outside the limits of the sign. So it actually it actually wraps around. I have another photo. Hmm. I think the case of the sign has a has a neon band yeah. around oh, it. it. See it? Yeah. <coughs> that existing neon border could be removed. So. <laughs> sure. Uh, 
both. I mean, you guys decide what you want. I would say remove it, but yeah. Then what the left facade that will be revised and not be internally illuminated and would, will only be illuminated from the external goosenecks. That's right. Yeah. And then number 10, finding 10, the applicants proposing a backlit halo illuminated pepper on the rear facade that will be illuminated with LED lighting. That's as shown on the drawing. And we're removing the existing wall sign on the right elevation. Correct. So the conditions are to show us to provide a sample for the blade sign and the monument sign mm -hmm. to ensure it's opaque. We're going to remove the pepper on the awnings. We're going to provide revised drawings that I needed to update this one. Should also eliminate the proposed neon one. Uh, should also revise the sign on the left elevation to only be externally illuminated by the existing gooseneck. On number, on number two, I think you want to say that they they can have the star graphic on the awning. The they may have, the, whatever, uh, it's up to them. Graphic will be permitted in place of the And for the, the front wall sign, there was, was there language in there that the neon can be exposed? Uh, the applicant is proposing a front and back lit halo pepper on the front facade with, fa with front faces illuminated with neon elements and yeah. back lit by LED lights. Jesse, change that for right after with right exposed neon elements. Basically, it's as dr drawn, so we don't have any additional conditions on that one. So then we wanted all backlit halo signs shall be designed to conceal all electrical conduit. The revised drawings conditioned above shall depict the elimination of the proposed LED accent band on all building elevations. The revised drawings shall also show the removal of the neon band on the blade sign. Yeah. Um, I think I already had the, okay, here's the sample. Provide a sample of the blade sign and freestanding. And then we typically ask for a color Pantone. Sometimes what we see on the printer yeah. and printed out on the yeah. computer is a little bit different, so the paint chips of the proposed um, sod color and so I see this as say maroon here right now is this a the trim is that a dark brown or is that a black brown. so because currently like if we look at some of the existing photos it is brown it now brown. Just 
<coughs> so yeah, it looks like it's it's like a black and brown and trim. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so just yeah, we'll yeah. want right. to of the black, of the brown, of the red, and then yeah. there's also tan. Yeah. And then we, um, mm -hmm. I just wanted to ensure that the, the goosenecks as, as they age over time, that there's no chipping of the paint or okay. that they need to, you know, we don't, we want to see that they're maintained. Yeah. So are we at a point where we can just look at this real quick and make sure we have all on page two, the only thing I put was next to the LED accent board is not approved. Um, the next page at the top on this can only have star, no cherry logo, and all the comments will be hidden. You know. Okay. Uh, the next page for the white elevation, the only thing I have is on this can have cherry logo, star is permitted. The next one, same no, it's got a chili logo. All comments must be hidden. Well, will not be internally illuminated. Only illumination will be the goosenecks. No conduit work on that wall, but. And I, I've got that too. All no, I mean, there is no conduit work. Oh, they're not oh, lighting yeah, yeah. the sign, but it doesn't matter. Just a, just, yeah. just a quick comment on this. So I see that we have this um, element here on the building proposed. And that's not currently there. And um, we may want to make a note of that actually in the decision. Yeah, right now it's just a concrete cinder block, you know, wall with a chain guard fence. I'd have to check with Scott <coughs> on that. <coughs> No, she's talking about the... Talking about the roof it's line. like a... Roof line. Line. Yeah. yeah. Do you have a West Springfield picture? Not of a, not a that. Not of that always, just a sign? Just a signage. Okay. Well, this is a, this is a See the roof COA, right? See the right? Well, it's... Oh, yeah. The way... The way I've actually drafted it is a modification to the 2002 design review. We don't have design review anymore, but that review included reviewing the facade. So, well, we don't know what that is. It's some sort of roof construction over the uh, service area. Well, no, no, it's not a service area. It's a public restroom or something. Outside the building. Part of their prototype rather than this particular building. That's on the other quick side. And the other elevation showed on that right hand side of the roof line. See how it shows a flush on there with different on the other side. I just have to get an answer for you, Scott. It's not that it's flush, I think it's just. Um, it's on the wrong side. Right? No, that's the back. Well, it's a it's 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 just that the that there's no dimension to the color plan. This is way back, so that's right. So I guess if if the applicant um, goes to the building inspector and, and wants to build this structure over the service area as depicted, does the CPDC have issues with that? What's in there, So is it going to cover this entire area? I don't have any knowledge of, of, uh, of that being part of the <laughs> So we, we could put a condition in here that submit the drawings yeah. to us. Obviously, it has to conform to building code. Um, you know, we could certainly request um, color yeah, 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 details to make sure that it, it does match what this 
rendering is showing, you know, I, I see it as, you know. And if you look at the rear elevation, it's dashed in. Uh, yeah. Really lightly. You gotta zoom in on it, you'll see it. Uh, yeah, so it does cover the whole. So how do we want to handle that? Well, that would be up to CPDC. Yeah. Okay. I, I, in my opinion, if it's significantly as shown, I think it could be done administratively. Yeah, I would, yeah. I would agree. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the building yeah, inspector is going to. Correct. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it sort of just cleans it up. It's refacing the, the structure to be consistent with our aesthetics in your block wall. Just a, it, for our purposes, it would be better to uh, recommend separate approval for that particular okay. piece of the. So of this, if there's, a, if there's some structure being built back here, this approval does not cover it, and that right. plans need to be submitted separately, separately right. to show what that is. And there's a good chance you get, you know, uh, planning department administrative approval. Okay. So do we want the details of that structure shall be submitted to the town? They need town a building permit for that anyway, so you'll see whatever they submit to the approval. For administrative review and approval, consistent okay. with the drawings. This is a structure versus a of the cement wall. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's... It's like a roof structure. Yeah, it's like a roof cover. On a commercial building? <coughs> This sort of so the rear elevation. I I didn't catch where the name is at. It's 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 yeah. 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 The rear. Okay. Cool. For signage. And then the to go blade sign. And that's uh, the same mm -hmm. thing. There, there's pictures of the awning, so the. Um, we just uh, removed the uh, mm -hmm. neon strip. Yep. Did I have? Oh, yeah, yeah. Not approved, must be removed. Next day, existing neon border. And then sample to be provided, right? For the neon, or for the uh, blade sign? For the face. For the blade sign and for the, yeah. for the okay. monument sign. And then the LED accent lighting not, not permitted, not approved. And then the monument sign sample to be provided. presented this as a modification, so we'll need to vote minor modification right. and, um, yeah. starting to say that. Sorry. <laughs> Move that the seat policy determine that the proposed changes to the signage, uh, actually does not be the office of this guy, uh, has to be a minor modification. Move that the 
CPVC approved the minor modification for the signage um, at Chili's restaurant on Walker's Foot Drive as amended. Do you want to say signage and building and facade changes? Because the painting? The signage and uh, building facade modifications. Thank you for helping me. <laughs> 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 yeah, this is the ZBA. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry to check it. Oh, that's okay. Can I just cross that out? Or? Yeah. And then it says Rain ZBA. Okay. Yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead and sign it. break. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I know that, but for some reason it like doesn't want to do, oh, maybe I was pushing function because I use a Mac at home and the buttons are different here. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know what it, I, I, I think it's like in a different spot too on the Mac, yeah. Wait, how do you do that? Function delete. Oh. And it goes back. Oh. What do you mean? To highlight the whole line? No, you know, in a, on, on a Windows computer, if you press delete, the cursor goes back. Yeah. Right? You can't but do that on it. On a Mac, if you press delete, it erases what's in front of it. Unless you have oh. a function down, then it goes back. Oh. That's a good one. It's really not, using them is like, Usually I'm pretty seamless. Like I do a lot of work at home. Cats and dogs. They're just, they're but just this so one I wasn't for some reason. Just because you're so, we're just so used to using this in business. Absolutely. So the Mac, one Mac for five years, nothing has ever gone wrong with it. I know. Ever. <laughs> ever. We have a Mac that's 10 years old. Yeah. It's perfectly fine. Yeah, no, we're pretty. It dies, it dies a lot because the battery is shot. But other than that. That's I was fine so my kid spilled the apple juice. <laughs> apple juice? Apple juice. It was my own fault. I shouldn't have. <laughs> so it wasn't even your kid's apple juice? No, no, no. no it, was, it was my kid's apple juice. Oh. And he's like, I want to see pictures of this camp I'm going to. And I'm like, all right, yeah, let's take a look. And boom. Can we take Sean next so we can get him out of here? Yeah, and you know, um, I yeah. have not seen the applicants for one... 45, 147. Um, I Don't jinx it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Let's not mention them. <laughs> can we proceed without them? You certainly can. It probably is not in our best interest, though, right? Um, I... I would say
flip things around and get Sean out of here. <laughs> so we will skip minor site plan review for Washington Street. We'll move, we'll skip the public hearing for now, and we'll move to the request for minor modification uh, at 612 Main Street and up Charles Road. So anything you want to open with? Um, you know what? It's pretty simple. I'm just going to let yep. Sean describe the changes. And it'll be very, very quick because it is very simple. For the record, as always, uh, Attorney Sean B.A. Welcome to Modern Mellon, representing the property owner, Haven Properties LLC. Before we see you, there's a request for minor modification of the approved site plan. Modification is with respect to the first floor elevation on the Main Street side. We are uh, have been asked in our proposing to uh, provide some sign field lighting. Um, we have submitted to you folks both the elevation plan that you're seeing on the monitor here, which depicts the location of the proposed uh, lighting fixtures. We've also submitted the particular spec sheets and uh, a detail showing you what the lighting fixtures are. Again, it is pretty fairly straightforward. Happy to entertain any questions that the board might have, but Again, we are asking that the board approve the minor modifications uh, for the sign for the lighting. So let me just add, um, I did forward this to the Historical Commission because they've been queued in along the way with this yes. building and they are meeting tomorrow night to review this. Um, I know it's sort of a little bit backwards, but um, it's the quickest that we were able to have that on their agenda. I think Jesse has proposed a particular condition to your approval this evening that would allow for any suggestions by them as long as they're within the kind of realm of like I can't think of the right word, realm of normalcy that they be uh, administratively approved and we certainly appreciate that. So I, I'm just more curious than anything. Um, was lighting was it was it thought that there was enough lighting in the area to be able to light the side field, sign fields um, without specific lighting for that? Or, if, or did someone, one of your tenants, say, we really need lighting? I'd how did this come about and how come? How why did we do it before? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think the thinking earlier was there was some debate as to where the particular lighting fixtures would go, and it was almost across that bridge when we get to it and see what the particular <coughs> tenants are going to want and require. Um, there was some discussion about how those would be uh, attached and where they would attach. And again, I think it was more like, let's see what tenants are coming in, what are their particular needs going to be, and, and then take it from there. We did propose it, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, this, we have it for the third floor elevation for that first floor on the approved plans. Mm -hmm. um, this is just for the, the first can you tell if the bulb is flat? Is it a flat LED that sits up in above the the dome, or does it hang down below the dome? I don't know. If it's not shown on that particular, I think that just shows the picture. I don't know if the particular bulb that we're planning on using is also proposed. I think it's flat. I think it's flush under there. This is the same picture that's on the Bunratty side, correct? I believe so, yes. This Jesse, I had asked if you wanted me to bring in a uh, particular example of it. If I had done that, then I would know the answer to that question because I would have seen the light bulb. But I have actually not seen these in person. I, I can certainly get that answer, but I, I don't know it as I stand here. I apologize. See you on the way home. question the, the fixture it I mean it's pointing straight down so how does that help illuminate the sign or Ooh, can it be adjusted straight down it can be adjusted mm -hmm. adjustable swivel yep okay. yes adjustable 45 degree swivel that's the question I was going to ask otherwise we're going to have although it's a good way to light out the front you know, seating area if you're thinking about that in the future. The problem is that the light source will be so visible, yeah. especially coming north up, up the hill. I know the, the intent is to angle it towards the sign to illuminate the sign. Okay. Do you need a condition? <coughs> well, the, I mean, if you look at the, uh, the line drawing, you'll see that the, the swivel is above the bell. It's not like the 
other. Uh, oh yeah, I see. It's not like the other goosenecks we've seen where the the bell is vertical and there's a slanted shade. Is the whole picture you would pivot or would need to be pivoted? Yep. Uh, anybody else? Any other questions, concerns? The only concern I have is that Orange Leaf has a flashing open sign in their window. Note it. Open, open. You move for the uh, animated sign. Yes, I noticed that myself. I did not know <coughs> that. I think they leave it. I think they can just leave it on. Yeah, it's just, right? just can't can't be flashing. It's usually just a. It's the standard unit with a multi-position switch, and, and we need them to have it on steady as opposed to moving. I have no problem passing that along. I'm sure that's an easy fix. Mm -hmm. He's a very active code enforcement officer. I'm sure he'd be glad to <laughs> take it off my plate. That's fine by me, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, move that the CPDC determine that the lighting change for the single story portion of the end of Charles property is a minor modification. Second. Mr. Taylor. Thank you very much, folks. Move that the CPC approved a minor modification. <laughs> Second. It's been a long day, sorry. Now just makes it right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank we, you. we look forward to coming in soon. We're getting pretty close to uh, coming back forward with folks for the second floor. Um, Oh, I'll make sure to put you on at 10 o'clock. Hey, yeah. <laughs> this was early, so it's fine. It's the last one, you were here. It's like 1230. <laughs> I'll try and make it back. No, listen, you guys are great to work with. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. All right, so let's <coughs> jump back up to uh, minor site plan review, 125, 147 Washington Street. It doesn't look like the applicant is here. Sure. So this is a um, minor site plan review for the property at 145, 147 Washington Street. I have a picture of it. Um, I'm sure you all are familiar with this building. Um, it's right where Washington and Ash Street sort of connect there. The, um, the owner of the building actually owns the adjacent salon, Fabiano, and he's proposing a very similar facade to this building. Um, I have a sample of the material he's proposing the cobblestone clay color um, here and proposing to change out the bay windows with um, three, dungle, three double hung windows uh, to match the other windows. They're also installing a um, split AC uh, system here. Um, actually, I don't think I can open that, but there is a photo in your packet of it that will be located at the rear of the building, the exterior condenser unit. Which is the rear, the one with the uh, fire escape? <coughs> um, let's see. Let's see if I can get out of this. Must be right. Actually, yes, I believe he's, it's, I guess it would be the, the side facade. He is proposing it along this, this facade here. Which one? This, um, this one here. Okay. <coughs> I'm sorry, where is, where is this? Oh, I can't even picture this. Um, it's where the road splits, where it's the, the Washington the splits. Oh, yeah, right by it's my dentist. Got it. Okay. So is there a signage change as well? Uh, that sign is actually down. Okay. 
the lighting will stay unless the future tenant chooses a different lighting. Um, they are going to leave it up to the tenant to choose what signage they want and they would have to return to the CPDC. So right now, the upper floor is a residential unit. The bottom floor is vacant. It was formerly the nail salon here and he is um, seeking an office tenant. Obviously anything he does propose there will have to ensure that he meets the zoning requirements for parking, <coughs> um, which at this point he, he does have enough spaces for an office use. I was confused. There was one picture that you were showing in there that looked like there's three bay windows. Or was it two bay windows and a, and a double door in the back or something? So we have two bay windows on the side that will be replaced with. Hmm. Do we know if he's proposing flush? Uh, double hung or if he's going to do the the, the uh, angled bay. It says double hung. Well, it says replace with three double hung. Yeah, it's going to make three new holes. It's going to take these these bow windows away. These are bow windows. And yeah. um, put three, three flash, three flush double hung windows. Okay. It says the three currently bay box windows. And the picture here shows two. Hmm. But one of the things that you had up there on the screen showed three. So I'm trying to understand. I've never seen three. Where's that third one? I don't see three. Unless there's one on the other facade that we just can't see. You know, there's a little addition on the, on the, it, oh. yeah. Uh -huh. That's the third one. Okay. That's Thank the one I thought I was going to see. Because we replace all three of those, with each with a single that's double hung. Double hung. Okay. It's going to be sparse. Big double hung windows. Yeah. No, I don't think he's going to, he's not going to replace them in width. They'll just be the regular standard double hung. Probably like what's on the front. Yeah. Hopefully they'll be the same height, so that they have some consistency. But they're going to look, the wall is going to look empty. Yeah. It's going to look pretty side bad. Side by side, even still. Three across the regular, the main building would be okay. Four would be better. Okay. It's going to look pretty crappy. How's that? Hmm? That's a technical term. Okay. <laughs> it's it's going to look empty. It's going to be a big wall of siding. That's the presentation face, really. That's what you see from Main Street. Might want to consider putting windows that line up with the skylights. Something. Mm. Unless he's doing a double, like he did at the center of his building on his um, main street face. No, the Fabiano, yeah, Salon yeah, Fabiano yeah. building. Oh, yeah. sorry. See the double in the center? Right. If you did three doubles, <coughs> it might be okay. Uh, I don't know. Just give him some direction. Tell him it, it looks like it's going to be a big empty wall. It's only three windows spaced out there. Do we want to maybe put anything in there? Well, 
basically suggest that the uh, consider additional windows. The, the fenest, whatever fenestration is the, the area would be approximately that would not be reduced. Sure. Say something like consider additional double hung units to maintain same fenestration ratio. What was that? Okay. Um, consider adding. No, that's right. Consider additional double hung units to maintain fenestration. Yeah, fenestration to wall ratio. Actually, it's ash tree, I guess, facing ash. Yes. That's ash. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. This little. Yeah. Right there. Painted in the street. I mean, it faces main and ash. So. Yeah, it's a parking lot side, whatever. <coughs> <coughs> the trim is just going to be uh, painted white. He's going to be painting the existing porches. Um, no additional site improvements at this time. Strictly just replacement of the, the siding with new siding and the windows. So I think it's, yeah, I think he meant, like, not site, but as I changed. So that would have, that would be this, um, this yes. wall here. So that is actually tucked, it would be tucked in between the building and the adjacent um, auto use building here, this ocean glass, so it would be tucked into this facade area. Okay, you know, we're, we're placing the, through the wall, you know, sort of there currently, okay, I got it. Forty-five, one forty-seven, one question on in condition number four. Four. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that I think I took that out. That I think was left over from the template. Sorry about that. Okay. 
a second. Second. All those in favor? Next up on the agenda, public hearing for CPDC rules, guidelines, regulations, and standards, site plan review. <clears throat> Pursuant to Reading General Bylaw Section 5.3 Rules and Regulations and, and Reading Zoning Bylaw 4.6.1.2, notice is hereby given that the Reading Community Planning and Development Commission, CPDC, will hold a public hearing on Monday. May 18th at 945 in the Selectman's Meeting Room of the Reading Town Hall, 16 Lowell Street, to discuss CPDC adoption of guidelines, regulations, and standards for the administration of site plan review, section 4.6. The complete text relative to the proposed document and more information are available for public inspection between 7.30 and 5.30 p.m. Monday through Thursday and until 7 p.m. on Tuesdays in the Community Services Department at Reading Town Hall. So this was to um, to address our new zoning bylaw and put a lot of our um, site plan requirements um, in an administrative document. Uh, this was presented to the CPDC. Nick had made a last change um, after the CPDC reviewed it um, back in March. Which just to uh, relate it to any modifications that are clearly redlined um, or noted um, with any changes. So what we have here is an updated application uh, with our you know changes to our thresholds. Uh, not much else has changed. We did take out sort of the checklist that was in here. Um, if you look sort of at the application for um, Pizza World, you'll notice that that application has a number of checklists, um, the checklist of a, a number of things that aren't to be included in the plans. Along with the zoning, the older zoning bylaw, we had um, a number of requirements for the plan. So those have all been taken out of the application, taken out of the bylaw, and put into these site plan review guidelines, regulations, and standards. The way we have developed this is to talk about the DRT up front, then going into the site plan review application. It also details the minor site plan review application submission before it really wasn't detailed in the bylaw, which we, we sort of made a little bit more clear in the update. And we also made sure that it was included in this document. Something that was suggested by the CPDC was to have the checklist and have an option for waivers so if an applicant believes that um, it really isn't applicable to their project to show a particular item on a plan or submit a particular piece of information, they can meet with staff in advance and get that waived and note it here on the checklist. Because we all know some of our applications, although they may fall under full site plan review, they may not need the level of detail as some of our larger projects. So we're hoping that this is sort of um, in line with our goal to streamline, modernize, simplify the process. Uh, I think I mentioned this before, we're working on creating a, a general flow chart to have applicants be able to look at right at the counter to sort of see what may be necessary for uh, approvals, as well as a uh, project intake form that we're gonna have available at the counter to get applicants thinking about what may be what may be needed for their particular proposal. Uh, but in between this, the application, all the other supplemental information will just hopefully make it a lot more clear to applicants on what they need. Thank 
feedback from the board? So, is this something you want to start right now? Um, we certainly don't have to. I have um, I'll pass those out. A schedule of the um, the zoning workshops. Um, this this shows that we were to look at um, the tele communications by a lot tonight. And then, if you recall at the last meeting, there was some discussion. George had presented a very shortened version of the PRD and was sort of thinking that that was something the CPDC could still consider for November. Um, seeing how, you know, we were sort of set back with town meeting, and we still have a lot of work to do on the telecommunications bylaw in the Aquifer Protection District. We're still waiting on comments back from DEP on that. Um, you know, if this board wants to sort of decide whether or not you want to pursue the PRG, PUG, you know, that could adjust the schedule um, to allow for more time for the telecommunications bylaw review at a future date. I know it's getting late. Well, it's getting late. I mean, you were saying that we've got a lot coming up. Yeah, I mean, there's there's certainly some some proposals, you know, outside of just our zoning projects. You know, I have a, a lot of holds, you know, from applicants coming through. We do have some changes to Walker's Brook, the Walker's Brook area that will be coming through. Um, that will take a decent discussion. We have some changes to Johnson Woods coming through, some ANRs that we anticipate. Um, so... It's just whether or not this board wants to continue with the idea of moving forward with the PRD or PUD or just focusing on what was presented with town meeting, focusing on the telecommunications bylaw off of protection. That's, I mean, I guess I thought we had already agreed to that and that's, when, that's why when I drafted my comments to town meeting, I, I did say we were not going to tackle this for yeah. November. And my apologies if I was wrong there, um, but, that, but that is what I said. And I feel like the three topics that we can push forward with for November are appropriate and they definitely kind of hit that tone, the town meeting of it's manageable. It's, I'm not gonna come with, to you with large volumes of changes again. Or if we do, it'll be managed in, in a more, uh, a, a different way. I mean, I'd I'm, I'm, prefer to, to push it out past November. I'm sorry, George, George isn't here. Yeah, I think I think the last at the last meeting there was you know a discussion, and I think the board sort of you know felt that it is too much to handle but he had made such a shortened down version I think that he had positioned it that you know let's not make a decision now I want to continue 
as if we could make November. So I still was holding it on the schedule. Um, but um, I think I think those are two very large sections, and we did just hit town meeting with a lot of changes. That was six weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. Spoke about that, so we've already lost six weeks. <coughs> what does everyone think? Are there well, the uh, I think we should uh, certainly continue the work, but not necessarily squeeze it into the uh, milestone framework for, for November. We clearly need to, to work on the, um, the zoning, but it's the chances of getting it done for November are very, very small. Because it's not only complicated, it will be contentious with the town meeting and, and the public level. And it's an area where people, are, people react to changes. I think we've already gone past that time where, yeah. um, where we could get effectively dealt with the okay. on the agenda. But I agree, it's something that as time permits, we, we yeah. need, that should be at the top of the list and we can be yeah. move forward because it's going to take, no, no matter when it gets on the, the agenda for town meeting, it's going to take a long time. find time in upcoming agendas, we should absolutely slot it. Yeah, the, the challenge that I, that I find dealing with, you know, the counter and applications coming through is, is in, in how I manage the workflow is, is when somebody comes in and they have a proposal, I give them the deadline, you know, and, and, and I note it on, you know, that they, you know, pending submission because you know, I like to keep a track of, oh, you know, who, who's coming in on the 12th to give me a submission. And that doesn't mean that they will come in, but it can also mean that I've told 12 people a deadline of the 12th, and mm -hmm. we get 12 applications, mm -hmm. and I can't, can't you know, it, it, it's really hard to gauge, um, you know, the, the agenda, how full the agenda is going to get. Like with this one, we had so much time that, you know, a lot of people had come through and I said, well, if you get it to me by this date, if you get it to me by this date, and then we get a really full agenda, you know, um, which is what happens when we have so, so much time in between meetings. Right. But, you know, as the agendas kind of get finalized, we, as we get closer to the meeting date, you know, I can certainly gauge and see if we were going to have some extra time and put it on as a work session topic. You know, at some point we're going to have to do that with, with signs. Yep. Uh, at some point we're going to have to do that with parking. Two oh, very <laughs> big topics. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's so, if that. you want to um, take on telecommunications tonight, or just um, push it to the next meeting. You know, I, I did send this out to the CBDC with some thoughts, some considerations. I'm not sure how many of you had a chance to really go through it. I have not had um, You know, I sort of set it up into questions and things to, to think about. Uh, for the public, I haven't had a chance to look at it, but I'm just wondering if uh, Tony has. Yeah, Tony, have you had a chance to look into this? No, uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may say so, I'm kind of surprised that over the last year when we were doing the uh, zoning changes, they had the website from ZB, ZBH or whoever it was, yeah. and you could follow along, but now nothing is getting posted on the web as far as I can tell. So it's harder to follow along other than coming down and actually finding the documents. Okay. Just yeah. a comment. Yeah. Yes, we are, we are working with... Um, 
the, the consultant to transfer everything over to sort of do a recap of what we did. Um, Caitlin is actually working very hard on, on that. She's helping us greatly with that. And then we, we do want to have the information available. So hopefully within the next week or two, we'll have, you know, similar in similar fashion, drafts posted available for, for viewing. But apologize for no apologies necessary. Um, not having it up yet, but um, is there anything that you need? Do you want? Do you have copies of this, or do you want Jesse or somebody to send them? Well, the only thing I, I would like is a copy of, if you could, the copy of the schedules. Oh yeah. Right. Do you want? Yeah. It's obviously reflects. Doesn't reflect what we talked about tonight. Right. Thank you very much. Okay, so why don't we table telecommunications for our meeting on the eighth? And that can take all, that can take the slot of PUD and PRD. Mm -hmm. Oh, we've already got it there. I'm sorry. So okay, perfect. And by and by that time, we should have. Um, we actually we, we did hear back from DEP on the Office for Protection. They had a number of, of comments, and, and town councils working on on that. Nothing substantial, just a few, I think, clarification points on their end. Um, yep. So. So town council's working with them on that. The purpose is, is done. I mean, and, you know, we, we've yep. talked about that before, so we certainly don't necessarily have to have that as a placeholder. So um, hopefully by the 6th, we can come back to talk over protection with any other changes <coughs> based on DEP's comments and um, telecommunications. Yeah, I would expect we'd be able to vote to include amendments on the orange on the 8th for, definitely for purpose, probably for actor for, yeah, you can be very vague when you vote it to include on the warrant. Okay, okay. yeah, that's fair. Oh, because you still have the public hearings. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. So that's right. that. So let's table that. Let's table the minutes. But let's, it feels like, you know, it's been a while, so maybe just take five, ten minutes to talk about any, um, any other updates, anything that's going on around town in the world? So um, there was a, a site eligibility letter for 40B project. I'm not sure if any of you have heard. Um, uh, actually, two 40Bs. All of them. Yeah, so two 40Bs. We had a 40B oh, to post off of Wall Street. Um, it was for 16 units, townhouse style. Um, on a little less than an acre of land, I believe. It was very dense. Um, this, that's the site that we had seen something on e before. Yeah, we had, staff had presented it to CPDC very informally when they were getting ready to submit for subdivision approval because they were essentially asking a waiver from almost everything. Roadway width, sidewalks. I mean, it was a very, very cramped site as it was, and they had some challenges with conservation. So they presented a site eligibility to mass housing for a 40B. We get we get a copy of that, and the town has an opportunity to comment within 30 days. So we sent back a letter um, recommending denial of that 40B because we had done so much planning um, for housing and affordable housing in town that it really didn't fit the character of the neighborhood. It didn't meet any of our planning efforts, our housing plan, the priority development plan, the um, smart growth districts that we have in place. So um, I'm not sure where Mass Housing stands with their determination, but that's what we had recommended. Then we received a application for site eligibility over on Lincoln and Prescott. That is across the depot where you set moving and storages. So what's unique about that proposal is that it's taking the Doucet storage site and the certainly wood site. And if you know that area, there's the automotive use in the center. They they were unable to acquire that piece of property. So they're actually going to connect the two parcels behind that automotive parcel and construct what they're proposing, 77 units of rental um, housing. 
very, very dense. It's 63 feet tall. Um, well, it serves them right for not including that piece in the 40R when we told them to. Yep, exactly. So, in terms of the housing component, <coughs> that's certainly what we would like to have seen there. We would have preferred to have seen it more along the lines of a mixed-use 40R type proposal. So, that is actually going to be before the developers come into the Board of Selectmen tomorrow night to talk about the proposal. Um, you know, we certainly have concerns. The fire chief has some kind of concerns with the access. The proposal calls for grade parking and then four stories above. So the height of the garage is a concern for the fire truck. They cannot access the back side of the building, although they may not necessarily need to be required to. It's certainly a safety concern for them. Um, so not only is it going to be 63 feet tall, but you can um, the street is going to be parking. It, the great the, the street level street environment level. is is all parking. Yeah, they have it proposed to be concealed in some some manner to to look I think like a like, like windows or fake windows, you know, some sort of design element. The architectural details try to mimic the train station. Um, the depot mm -hmm. architectural details, um, but it is it is a big structure, and it's right up to right up to the property line. The act actually Doucette, the Doucette building encroaches into the roadway layout, so they will actually be restoring that 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 line there when they take that building down. But it'll essentially be sort of right up to. Um, so with with this project. Can you bring up the site? What? Can you bring up the site? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's <coughs> you know, like 30 feet from the Parker Tavern, right? <laughs> so it's it's taller than this building, the existing <coughs> building. So what they're planning on doing is wrapping around, if I can go down this way. Wrapping around the back, so they'll have some sort of connector between sort of two structures that will house the units. So if you look at it from a map mm -hmm. perspective, these two sites, this site here, it will become one site from this perspective, have sort of a skinny <coughs> corridor that will attach you know, a block of. So that's the certainly wood. This is certainly wood. house is for sale too, I think. The one that's right in front of Arlington. Right, that, I think that house this is one? for sale. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know, but you know, they did talk about maybe acquiring a house back here for additional parking. Um, right now it's like 1.03 spaces per unit and there's a concern or any sort of overflow parking where does the visitors park. It's very constrained. You need to make a concerted effort to let people know that this is a 40B and this is not part of what we had planned. Because if you remember when that consultant first showed max development of the whole downtown, they showed you know four-story buildings, five-story buildings everywhere from South Main Street all the way to North Reading practically. I don't know if you remember that presentation. I don't think there. I was right. here. No. They did a presentation where they maxed out everything and scared <laughs> scared everyone. And yeah, um, we were talking about the downtown smart We're trying growth. to develop the smart the smart growth district and we wanted this edge because these are the last few big sites and um, so people need to understand this is not something that we planned for. This scale is not what we intended. It's it's five times the density what's allowed under yeah. 40R. Right. 40R is already 20 units to the acre. Right. I mean, Oak Tree is 73 units to the acre. The CPDC granted a density waiver on that to allow 73 units to the acre. Um, but that's certainly not 93 units to the acre what this You're is. You're not going to get the kind of facade breaks that you have on the Haven Street side. 
this development? Not the way that, yeah. Right. What do you, th mm -hmm. uh, hopefully the town manager's already started writing something up. Yes, also. we have, um, we have a letter drafted to sort of that extent where, you know, we would really prefer a proposal under 40R, not 40B. You know, we actually have in that priority mapping project that we completed a few years ago. I know Dave, you attended. We talked about the expansion of the 40R or the 40, yeah, the 40R. Um, so <coughs> going back to, I, I mean, I wasn't here, but my understanding is it was a much larger district originally proposed, and it was scaled back. So sort of looking at that and expanding it, and that that priority development plan calls for expanding over to these parcels. Mm -hmm. So we. Well, the original proposal for the 40R was the entirety of Business B. Right. The downtown Business B. So the and priority, including, yeah. Including uh, uh, Lincoln Street there uh, and High Street. Yeah, so in that plan, which is a planning document that, you know, we plan on referencing is ex that expansion, and we did look into it, and even as part of this economic development action plan, we're looking into with MAPC that then takes those priority development areas and really gets down to the level of density and does you know some modeling based on the market analysis and our zoning and what the site can support. You know was was going to show this site's potential under 40R. So we're, we were actively looking at it as a true potential expansion and you know it fell short. So we do have this application pending. The next step is to have the mass housing issue or not issue a, a letter of eligibility, but um, at which point it would go before the Board of Appeals for the comp permit. Mm -hmm. They did hold a neighborhood meeting last week. Um, I was unable to attend. But I heard that, you know, there, not surprisingly, there's concerns from the neighbors. Not surprisingly, so. Did they actually show anything? Did they show buildings? I, I think, I have no idea, actually. They probably did. I'm assuming they, they would. So. Everything is for community? Um, I think in the past when there's been a 40B, the Zoning Board of Appeals has asked for comments from other boards. Um, so once they formally submit their comp permit application to the Board of Appeals, you know, we could certainly bring it before this board, although they, they are exempt from any zoning requirements, meaning site plan review as well. It doesn't hurt to add comments and submit it as part of that process to the ZBA. I mean, one thing to possibly consider, and goes back to sort of stretching this board's um, availability, is you know considering bringing an article to November town meeting for the expansion and inclusion of these parcels. For <coughs> VR. May or may not impact anything if the developer moves forward in advance of that, but. Yeah, I mean, just bear in mind that the, the 40R does not uh, prevent 40B. Doesn't. They could, we could, we could certainly go, let's say the developers, you know, still, you know, takes a while for them to even submit, prepare their application for the compromise, even if we go to November town meeting and approve a map change to include these parcels, it doesn't mean that they could still submit a 40B right. and a 40R. Right. They're looking at 70, uh, 77 units. Yes. They're just maxing it out. They don't. They don't care. They don't care. Um, so, on that note, with the economic development action plan, we will be having um, a, another forum on the third. Um, getting some notifications out. 
So we're going to be focusing on the Ash Street area. Um, looking at this in more detail, we're going to actually invite the neighborhood. Because if we don't want to get too far along, we kind of took a step back with MAPC. We don't want to get too far along and have MAPC do all this work if there's not going to be any buy-in from the neighborhood. Just from the history of this particular area and knowing <coughs> that there's been some opposition in the past. So we're, we're specifically targeting this, this neighborhood for outreach um, and notification of the meeting. So um, I can certainly post this for the CPDC if, uh, if you all want to attend. Uh, the last one was probably one of the best attended forums I've been at. Mm -hmm. We had 60, 60 people attend. It's very well attended. So that's on June 3rd. That's all I have really for right now. I heard one thing and read one thing. I heard Grumpy's was sold. And they're going to be kind of rebranding and renovating their, their site. I did hear something. I Something to that extent. I don't remember where I heard it from, but they haven't approached us formally. Okay. Then, too, I read in the paper that there's a liquor license hearing for a replacement restaurant where Macaroni Grill was? Yeah, so one, uh, Walker's Brook Drive is going to ha come before the CPDC for a modification to the uh, special permit for a number of changes over there. Uh, the last time they were before us was with the staples, yeah. downsizing the staples sure. and looking at a restaurant space there. Um, they've since had some changes go on, so um, they do have a restaurant uh, proposed that will need a liquor license. So that will be going before the Board of Selectmen, um, but you will be seeing those changes. The uh, Jordan sign is going up. Not sure if anybody saw that. Changes to it. It's good. Yeah. Um, no news on the post office. The last I heard is the bids were closed, and I think they had two viable um, bidders. Um, that's about it. So <clears throat> something on my collection of desk things is a bunch of uh, light things that says Perfectos. Was that something that happened earlier and I missed it? So when, um, no, those were just the, the uh, Brandon is using the same lighting specs as Perfectos. <laughs> For those particular units. Mystery solved. Yeah, he's, he's Moving along. Can you update on Bono Addies? Uh, getting close. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was in there a few weeks ago and, you know, they were getting the dishes organized, hanging stuff on the walls. They had it, you know, they're still finishing the work right. inside, so. Hmm. Yeah. I learned something from the Dave and Buster's. They're moving like mad. Yeah. I had no um, idea what that was. So I, I had to ask Sean because he works right there in that building. I said, what is what is that prison? Box. That prison yeah. going up? Dave and Buster's. Dave and Buster's. My, this older, is bananas. my <laughs> older boy got a job there. He's in one of the line trucks. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anything else? Move to adjourn. Stalemate? <laughs> Come on, people, don't fail me now. <laughs> Always a favor.